मिलन वन स्मॉल स्टेप फॉर विक्रम वन जॉइंट लीप फॉर इंडिया टीम चंद्रयान थ्री इज काम एंड कॉन्फिडेंट चेयर फॉर चंद्रयान विथ न्यूज ट्रैक The journey of Chandrayaan 3 has India grip really has any feet in science and technology arouse the kind of public interest as this lunar mission has let's get started here are the headlines i'm tracking today less than 24 hours to go for Chandrayaan 3's moon touchdown isro ready with plan b in case conditions are unfavorable Prime Minister to watch the landing live virtually from South Africa. <laughs> Delhi rapist Babu and wife's attempt to evade arrest foiled. CCTV video shows the bureaucrat at church days after FIR was filed against him. Delhi women panel chief seeks a meeting with Home Minister Amit Shah over this case. <laughs> Prime Minister Modi receives a big welcome as he lands for the BRICS summit in Johannesburg. suspense over bilateral with chinese president xi jinping superstar rajnikant defends his gesture of bowing to touch up chief minister yogi adityanath's feet says it's a habit congress mocks the rajni yogi meet calls it a curtsy call to the next pm indian test uh, indian team chess prodigy Raghunanda and Magnus Carlsen settle for a draw in game 1 of the World Chess Championships final. India is at the edge of its seat as the final countdown begins to the landing of Chandrayaan 3. The Vikram lander now just 25 kilometers away from the surface of the moon. At 6:04 p.m. tomorrow, it will attempt to land on the lunar surface. ISRO says so far the mission fully on track, all systems are working properly. But just in case conditions tomorrow are not ideal, ISRO says they have a plan B ready. India's moon mission is hours away from a historic climax. Chandrayaan's Vikram lander is approaching the moon rendezvous. Saying hello to Chandrama, snapping breathtaking images from close vicinity, showing moon in all its glory. With details of the unexplored far site complete with billionaire old craters. Indian Space Agency asserted that the mission is fully on track. The system is undergoing regular checks. to ensure a smooth touchdown it is almost similar to what we uh, designed or developed for chandrayaan 2 except for instead of orbiter now because orbiter is anyway working fine right. and it is still useful and it is giving lot of in, important data which will be utilized for chandrayaan 3 landing also mm. so we decided that uh, we, we orbiter will be replaced by a propulsion module Uh, which which duty is to take it to the orbit of moon surface isro is not taking any chances especially after crash of the russian moon mission keeping another landing site ready for sunday touchdown if parameters aren't ideal on wednesday former isro chief k sivan broke down the final maneuvers moments before the planned touchdown first of all uh luna uh, mission failure and uh, this one they are not related luna actually that is have its own system its own uh, the sensor thrusters and it may have its own characteristics but uh, we have our own system our own thruster our own sensors which is, it has been functioning very nicely and without any problem and uh, till now we are uh, uh, achieved what we want in a perfect way and i am sure that this will repeat on 23rd also so we will get a good uh, uh, landing 
and uh, we are not getting answered, uh, uh, disturbed by the lunar 25 failure. We are, they are not related, they are not a similar system, they are different system. Okay. So we are confident that we are, uh, we'll be able to achieve without any problem. A billion cheers, prayers and wishes are meanwhile pouring in as India roots for Chandrayaan 3. एक बहुत बड़ा इतिहास भारत के सभी विशेषज्ञों ने हमारे वैज्ञानिकों ने रचा है और प्रधानमंत्री जी के नेतृत्व में भारत नई ऊंचाइयां तो छू ही रहा था भारत का तिरंगा केवल देश के अंदर नहीं लेकिन विश्व पटल पर पर अब हमारी यही कोशिश है कि वो तिरंगा चांद पे भी Special pujas are being held in temples and namaz is being offered in mosques, all for Chandrayaan's success. The lander is expected to touch down on Moon's South Polar region at 6.04 p.m. on Wednesday. We wish India a grand success in conquering the Moon. With Akshita Nandagopal in Bengaluru and Milan Sharma in Ahmedabad, Bureau Report, India Today. Joining me on this special broadcast are two of the legends of Indian uh, space research. I am joined by YS Rajan, distinguished professor, Isro, former scientist, Padma Shri awardee, close uh, aide of uh, the former president, Dr. Kalam. Maila Swami Anadurai joins us, former director of the Isro Satellite Center, uh, popularly known as the Moon Man of India, was involved in Chandrayaan 1. Uh, with me in the studio is uh, editorial director of publishing at India Today, Raj Chingappa. There's nobody I know who tracks science and technology in the journalistic community quite as closely as Raj does and has the breadth of experience in India's moon journey uh, and space journey as Mr. Chingappa. So I want to go across uh, first and foremost to YS Rajan. Uh, sir, if you could begin by explaining to our viewers the circumstances under which ISRO's uh, space team will decide tomorrow whether or not to go ahead with the landing. We're told that a plan B is ready and that there is a possibility that the landing of uh, the Chandrayaan-3 could get pushed to Sunday the 27th. So what are the kind of conditions that ISRO scientists will be looking out for which will help them determine whether to go for that attempt at a soft landing or to delay it till Sunday? See, this is a question on which uh, I won't be able to answer anything substantively truthfully. Because as of now, we are going by the same thing what is going on the scheduled time. 5.47 goes into the autonomous landing system. And then 6.02 or 6.03. Maybe since you have got uh, another, right? Uh, maybe you may be able to say something. But uh, I, I wouldn't like to venture okay. into saying something. I, I respect here. that. By, so, by Swami, all, Anadra, by let me all ask. means, yes. it look, yes. appears that it will land on very correctly on time. Okay, you're saying you think chances of a landing being attempted as per schedule are higher. Maila Swami Anadurai, as the moon man of India, could you explain, sir, the circumstances which will be involved in determining whether to go ahead with that landing to try and do what no country has pulled off so far or to push it till Sunday? Yeah, you, if you look at that, uh, every uh, launch, even the rocket launch, has its own the countdowns uh, for the uh, targeted launch date and depends on 36 hours before, 48 hours before. Uh, you would have seen that PSLV, GSLV launches. And uh, that, that means every uh, second ticks, uh, we have the host of the parameters to be verified, host of the activities to be verified. Not only on the hardware which is sitting on the launch pad, as well as the ground systems, uh, ground systems sitting in Srigiri Kota, as well as the down range ground systems, uh, communication channels, radar systems. I think many of the host of the things needs to be uh, verified, including communication links. Uh, I think host of the things needs to be verified. Uh, and, e and each one has been identified uh, responsible people, they will do it. And they will report back to the launch authorization board and launch authorization board tells Yes, you can go for the targeted rate, uh, whether all systems are ready. I think the process is uh, uh, going on. And uh, that, that I think we have to wait and see what uh, finally, because uh, this countdown, uh, it also gives a room for the possibility if something is uh, uh, 
uh, normally you are seeing a possible room to correct also. I think we have to keep in mind uh, that also. Uh, keeping in mind, I think uh, we have to keep the fingers crossed until uh, uh, the tomorrow, uh, the uh, like, like launch authorization board, the mission management council uh, will uh, uh, look at all the uh, responsible people, whomever they have done, and uh, their reports, and accordingly, it will go. And you would have seen even the launch time before um, go is given by the mission director. Uh, uh, each one of the stations uh, giving green, 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 green. They are not only looking all the things put together only, the so-called launch takes place. And uh, even, and it's no difference when you are going for the soft uh, landing is concerned. All the systems from the lander, the software, the hardware systems, and the ground systems, and the ground communication, uh, from the lander all the way to the uh, earth, both directly to the earth and as well as through Chandrayaan 2. I think host of the thing and two way communication and what all programs we uploaded here, uh, whether it is being it has to normally be downloaded and read uh, thoroughly, whether not even a single bit uh, has an issue. Okay, okay. then only we'll go. So, so, okay. so, Ra about what would be going through the minds of our scientists? Because an India Pakistan cricket match during a World Cup is pressure. This, I just get the feeling, is infinitely more pressure than an India Park cricket game. <laughs> you know, and these are men of science, and there are these namazes and these pujas, havans happening all over the country. How does it play on their psyche? Does it at all? No, I was speaking to Dr. Somnath, the chairman of ISRO, yesterday. I think. Uh, He's experienced, like all space scientists have experienced, both failure and success. And in fact, Dr. Kalam, whom Dr. Vyas Rajan knows so well, and I'm so happy to see Dr. Rajan on this, used to say, failure is the stepping stone of success. So ISRO has learned over a period of time of that. So they have, uh, you know, put aside the set, uh, you know, not put aside, but actually studied the setback that happened in Chandrayaan 2. And then what he says is, I mean, let's look at what really failed at Chandrayaan 2, right? There was a propulsion failure. There was an ex uh, too much speed going on uh, at, at a particular point of the descent. Then there was a guidance failure and a control failure that landed in the crash. So in each of these three sectors, from what he told me was that he has built, if earlier it was success oriented, that you know everything will work and therefore you build parameters only for that success, this time it's failure oriented. So they've calculated at every stage, whether it's the propulsion and the thrusters and how much is it giving and what is this thing. They've built a redundancy in that. In the guidance system, they've built redundancies and control and landing. But so, apart from algo testing, this right. has never really been tested in the Absolutely. real world. This has happened. This is something which is being attempted, which has never been done by any country ever to land on the south pole of the moon. Well, you know, the, the, the people have landed and also, let's not, on the, on the South Pole is a little more difficult because there's plenty of craters, there are problems of shadows, uh, you have to get your solar panels right because, you know, if you're landing at the equator, which is the easiest of the lot where most people have done that, you, you don't have the kind of complications that are there. But at the South Pole, why, why are we doing it? Because there's a lot of water ice over there and all future missions would, you know, if we have to colonize the moon, we have to find water, not only to, uh, you know, uh, uh, live there, as well as for, say, generating hydrogen for, uh, you know, spacecraft that we can take to Mars and others. So us going to South Pole is a calculated strategic move. It's tough, it's risky, because there are a lot of boulders, there are a lot of craters, but that's the challenge. And I think this time what they have done is, last time there was a small window uh, in the sense, a small area, which is around uh, 500 square, uh, you know, uh, uh, like a football field that they decided to land. But this time they've expanded it to even larger, four square uh, kilometers, which gives you, uh, you know, a lot more sort of uh, leeway. Last time they were rushing through to land at that precise point. The second thing I think is, as different from Chandrayaan 2 is they're carrying more fuel. Okay. And that's very important. So, because what happens is if you have a deviation, you have enough fuel to burn to correct it and get it can, there. Can you explain, Dr. Rajan, to our viewers, how do you ensure that the uh, Vikram rover, once it lands, is controlled in a way that it doesn't get stuck in any of these boulders or the sandy formations on the, uh, on the surface of the moon? And the fear that even if there is a successful landing, the need to control the lunar probe to be able to execute all the scientific experiments uh, is successful. Okay, thank you. See, main thing is, let us remember one thing. All what could be done is before 5.47 p.m. Uh -huh. tomorrow. Once that 5.47 is gone, it goes to the automatic landing system. Okay. Then they are also the same boat like us because then 
the Vikram and Pragyan. Uh, Pragyan, of course, inside. So they are of their own. Okay. But to answer your question, what happens? The crater, this one, that one, etc. A lot of data has come from Chandrayaan to itself. In fact, Chairman is row in earlier in the beginning part of it, he explained several things. In that, he said that even for the landing for Chandrayaan 2, they had to restrict it to a certain area because that's all what they knew. Now, because of the Chandrayaan 2, they have got a much more, so it has got more areas in which it can be landing. Then it has got automatic velocity seeing, all for the landing, and then altimeter, etc. So once it lands, soft lands, we all pray that it takes place well, then it is lander, lander of its own, everything. That fellow will, this will come out, and then they have programmed it on all possible modes which can take place. This failure, if it takes place, what it will do? If it may encounter this, what it will do? If it is a slope, what it will do? Or if something else, almost for most of these things, those programs have been loaded into the computer system there. And there are so many sensors there, underneath camera, this, et cetera, et cetera. With all of that, they will guide by themselves and go. It is for these 14 days. That's what it is. You know, what what the makes this is, even key, more key fascinating... Land, land software successfully. You know, and which is why I think it will be one of the biggest visual moments uh, of the yeah. year and arguably so of all time minutes. is because so there will be live minutes. footage coming in. Now, just imagine, this is as the Chandrayaan, and explain, Dr. Rajan, the technology involved in that, as the Chandrayaan 3 lands, it's not as if you're seeing an empty screen, because initially, when a rocket would take off, you'd see the initial few seconds, and then the rocket would be gone. Here, you've got cameras on the Chandrayaan 3 that track uh, the Chandrayaan 3 as it lands. That's quite incredible. How is that happening, sir? That is happening because they put a camera there, and then you need communication. Uh, Chandrayaan 3 itself, the fellows who, who took it, the orbiter, it has got a link. And then in addition, Chandrayaan 2 was working well, so that lander has made a link to that also. So it has got two links. It, from the lander, even the after the thing, when the rover also comes down, it will give to the lander, to the Vikram. Then there are two communication channels which communicate with the Earth. The ISRO's deep space uh, network or something, they say. So, now everything can be seen. Even, in fact, one of the ISRO missions, they did it one camera in the bottom also. They kept one of the launch vehicle. In future, you will see such small TV cameras will be available. So, it will be a great thing for you people. All oh, these absolutely. images will come. So, no, this is, one yeah. is, you are seeing it. Now, you will see. Even when the, all those things, soft landing, etc., are taking place, you will see those. What I said was, you can't do any any control on it. Uh, ALS <laughs> takes over. It comes and soft land. Then about two hours or so, I think they have programmed it. Uh, maybe even there, they might have given some, this one where the dust and everything has settled. Then the one panel comes out. Then like uh, as we come in the uh, aircraft, sometimes emergency landing, they put a one slide, it comes. So this will come in that. Like uh, somebody explained it very beautifully, kangaroo's child, like that, ah. it will leave it in. So then, then that is Pragyan. It is named Pragyan. Little tough to make it. So that is that fellow will start moving around, and when it moves around, it will always be in touch with the mother, Vikram. And all the data it collects, the two payloads also which will give there. So whatever it does, whatever it goes. Uh, 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 Vikram also will be seeing it. Amazing. I wish I had you, Dr. Rajan, as my science teacher in school and college. It would have been great to learn in the way that you're describing it, this little fellow, that little fellow. It just makes it so much more relatable. And this advancement in technology, Raj, would be so different from the time you started covering India's space mission or the moon journey, where all you had were these images where you could see dots but not the kind of live broadcast images we're seeing right now. Well, you know, I think what ISRO has done is really built on the competence. Uh, it, it, it was very hard focused on development, uh, you know, uh, technology, which was 
building uh, launchers and then satellites that we could utilize. So whether it was telecommunication uh, or uh, remote sensing or even navigation and uh, military uh, satellites. We built a competence. Now we are going into the next big step that is there, which is exploration. We started that with Chandrayaan. We had uh, Mangalyaan. And now we are bringing back, I think, the Luna mission because the world is now interested. You, you, if you've seen uh, till about uh, 70s and 60s, you had over 100 missions. Then suddenly everything petered off. And only in 2000... Why did the world lose interest well, in going to the moon? Essentially, a couple of things. One is because all these missions, they got back a lot of uh, lunar... Uh, uh, material and they were able to study it and find out what was there and then they wanted to go beyond and do other things that were there whether it was a space station and uh, endurance in terms of Mars. Moon has come back for two reasons. One, they, uh, we, uh, I mean particularly US which has started the Artemis pro project which by 2025 will have again uh, humans on the moon. And the idea is uh, to colonize, uh, to use moon, uh, to colonize moon in some senses, and use it as a staging ground for exploration of Mars and other things. Why because is it easier to? Let me ask Dr. Rajan this question: Why is it easier to explore Mars and other places in our galaxy from the moon than it is from the Earth? See, it is so simple. It is nearer. No, but you're also so far away. So your ability to move things, get things there, restricted by the fact that you're already no, no, so far from the Earth. No, no, we don't have to do it. It will be done there. Yeah. See, now you see the other newer technologies. Here we are doing it by traditional manufacturing. There will be 3D things there, 3D doing, and probably new propulsion systems. When they all come, from there it is much easier. And then Earth's gravity pulls you down. Atmosphere breaks it. That is why the first this one you have got a Bahubali bottom when up to 15 kilometers really it has to struggle through. Here, there it is vacuum. But not don't think that it will be happening in the next 5 years or so. 15, 20 years by that time all those assembly will be done. That is the reason they are going for the South Pole. There has to be a human habitat. Can't go automatic. Everything cannot be automatic. There will be technicians and others who will live, who will do the thing. Then the water will be recycled. Then there will be some, probably they may start with algae and some plants because you have to eat also. All the food cannot be transported. Already it is heavy. So, so all those things will be there. It will, there will be some small habitat which will come. And probably countries are going to co cooperate. You mentioned about Artemis. So there is a possibility people will cooperate. Some will do this, some will do that, etc. So that's all. So the from oh, but the why moon have three missions failed so far? The Israeli Bereshit, Japan's Hakuto R, Russia's Luna 25, all three attempting a similar landing on the South Pole of the Moon, all failed. Why? See, each one of them had different reasons. Japanese, some other, Israeli, some other. But they were all coming very close, like our Chandra and two, very close to the soft landing. Russians, of course, are very great, but their failure was even before what the current orbit is. Please remember, it is now it is 25 kilometers by 135 or something like that. Earlier you were talking about 100. Actually, the Russians also were in the high, higher one, and then they were going a break and then coming to this. At that point, they got into trouble. So that is a different type of problem. That landing has always been, soft landing has been a problem. Because atmosphere is not there. So it has to do purely of its own weight and the thrusters. Uh, but people have understood much more. See, just as two, three, if you see the earlier space, today I was just doing in the Zoom. I knew it before. No, not Zoom, I'm doing in the, in the Google. Earlier, Failures, if you see from NASA and the USSR, so many. In fact, when we start doing our relatively failures are low because the corpus of knowledge which is available in the world wide, there is some amount of sharing. Nobody can keep everything under. People read, people learn. Uh, many of our fellows will know a lot of things. So we learn. It is a continuous process of learning and doing it. And to me, it appears from all what is there, and what all uh, Somnath, the chairman, has explained, the amount of precautions and everything they have taken, not only the fix the earlier problems, but also introduce so many other things. About 80% of 
changes have been done into it. So with all that, I see a very, very, very high probability that it will land well. Okay, we've got our fingers crossed. This has been a master class in science. Dr. Rajan, I appreciate you taking our time and I hope to see you tomorrow after a successful landing. I want to welcome now Dr. Amitabh Ghosh, a space scientist formerly with the Mars Exploration Rover mission of NASA. We've got Dr. P.K. Ghosh, space strategist and researcher. Uh, Dr. Ghosh, the biggest question at this moment is whether ISRO will push for the landing tomorrow or will they activate plan B which is to push the landing till uh, Sunday. Could you explain as best as you can the factors that will be at play in the way that you would have done it at the Mars Exploration Rover for NASA. What would be kept in mind whether determining whether to go for that landing or to delay it and hedge till Sunday? Well, um, so um, you have to see what the trajectory is at that point. And based on that, you decide whether it's that optimal time to launch or not. Right. So anyone who's predicting either way, not landing, landing, probably does not know. It will depend on what they assess to us from now. So all predictions of what's, I mean, I think even ISTRO is trying to keep the options open. That's why they have come up with that other other thing. So there are many parameters they will look at. And if something appears off, then of course, they will try a different time. So, and I was listening to the previous discussion um, uh, about, um, uh, there is a lot of speculation. One is the moon is does, is not going to be the landing stage to reach out to the other planets. There is no advantage. The only advantage is to do technology demonstrations so that you can um, test these technologies before you head out further. So um, th that's what it is. Okay. How do you think the program has gone so far? From what we are hearing from ISRO, is that uh, so far things have been as per schedule in the way that they would have estimated. Is this a project that say NASA, the Chinese, the Russians, they all got their eyes out or it's not such a big deal for them? Well, it is, uh, it's a curiosity. I wouldn't say that, uh, um, see there are many missions going on. As you mentioned, there, there were Japanese missions and Israeli missions and so there are a lot of activity going on. So I wouldn't say everyone is, um, um, everyone is rooting for the success, that's for sure. Um, how, um, if, if you look at um, how NASA missions have gone so up to this stage, so I, I was actually not just part of the Mars Exploration Rover, it's also Curiosity, Mars Pathfinders, um, Mars Phoenix, all these missions. Um, at this stage, everything looks good. It's the last stage, the landing stage, which is most difficult. So just because up to this stage, everything is fine, doesn't mean why, that... Why the is landing... the landing the most difficult stage, sir? See, because the parameter space of the engineering parameter space is very large. So you have to have the light, right amount of deceleration, the right amount of atmospheric um, resistance. So all your parameters should match. And you're guessing because, you know, you don't know... All these spacecrafts have not been tested on the, under lunar conditions. They have been tested under Earth conditions. So, um, same Mars, when you're going through the atmosphere, you don't know the atmospheric stratification, the density, the pressure, the temperature. You're discovering it kind of the first time. And so you have to adapt immediately. Your algorithm should be good enough. And then there are slight things which can happen, like what if it did not land on the four legs? What's your, what's your, um, what's your um, remedy? What if the legs broke? What if there was a rock uh, there and it it kind of... So, so there are many possibilities. So and, what happens you know, in those I, cases? I, Let's take it one by one. What if it doesn't land on all four feet, lands only on two? Uh, what if one of the legs breaks? What happens in these cases? Well, I think you have to ask somebody from ISRO, but I can tell okay. you from NASA missions, a lot of... We did... There is, for example, if the rover overturns, right? Um, this was a possibility for Mars Pathfinder. It was a very small rover like this. Um, there is really no recourse. So, so, so you know, if uh, so, so you know, we had a ramp. Um, so the lander had a ramp, and the rover gently came down that ramp on the surface. What if it did not come down gently and it toppled? Well, that's the end of the mission. It cannot drive again, right? Oh, good luck. And uh, and then you know, the ramp 
if you remember the ramp, so the, the Istro will also have a ramp. The ramp from Pathfinder in 97 got stuck in airbags. So we could not unroll the ramp, right? So if you cannot unroll the ramp, you cannot get the rover off the lander. So again, that's, that's again a So what did you do then? If it trip. got stuck in airbags, what did you do? So we played that same situation out on the ground here in our, in our test lab. And we tried many, many combinations. And then we somehow found a strategy how to, to entangle it. So it was very, very tense. You know, this is what you will not see. <laughs> but there are a lot of things which go, go down. You know, the you're just and the making it sound <laughs> much more scary than one would have imagined. Right. Uh, right. Dr. Right. Ghosh, let, let me just build with uh, what I was asking Amitabh Ghosh, Dr. P.K. Ghosh, about some of these circumstances. What if it doesn't land uh, on all four feet? What if it lands on only two? Or what if it overturns? I mean, as someone who didn't study science in any serious way, those things sound very scary to me. What happens in some of these circumstances, sir? Uh, well, uh, what I have heard is um, that even if one of the legs slightly breaks or there is a problem in it, but still they have strengthened the leg so much. In fact, they have strengthened the leg to almost one. It can take the uh, thrust of one meter per second more than it was earlier. And um, I think uh, that is what uh, they are hoping that these legs, as you are showing now, will be able to absorb uh, whatever is the thrust which comes, whatever is the speed at which it comes. Of course, they have laid down the uh, uh, the parameter for the speed. They say that even if it comes at a speed of, let's say, one to two meter per second, it can withstand the uh, pressure. Um, that is, I'm talking of the vertical uh, uh, speed. Uh, if there is a sway of, let's say, 0 0.05 meters, still they can, uh, it can withstand. So I think uh, all this has been inbuilt into the lander. And uh, I really see no reason as to why. Of course, as Amitabha mentioned, that uh, if the slide doesn't open or if there is some unusual uh, event which happens, that is possible in anything, anywhere. So one, uh, uh, of course, one features in certain uh, contingencies, but it's absolutely impossible to feature out all contingencies. That thing up and so, just shows how the slightest error at any moment can upend all these plans. I mean, you could have gone, engineered a soft, successful landing, and then, like uh, Dr. Avitabh Ghosh was saying, it gets stuck in the parachutes and the rover doesn't come down and voila, you're stuck. Yes, space is unforgiving. You know, you could be 99.9% .9 there, but that 0.1% can make the difference and destroy it. But I think what ISRO is targeting are three things, essentially in Chandrayaan-3. One, to land on the moon, right? That by itself is an achievement. Two is to get a rover out, as Amitabh was saying, and what it can do. And three is, of course, doing the scientific experiments, both from the lander and it. Now, even if we do land, and as uh, my friend was talking about the difficulty of it, what they have done is, uh, this is, you know, it's very interesting, even the legs, the, the way the, the lander is, it's got this honeycomb arrangement with aluminum. So it's like a shock absorber. So when it slams down, what he's mentioned is that what ISRO has done is redundant uh, systems that's there. So they have built this much stronger than the earlier Chandrayaan-2 uh, lander that was to be there. Two, as the way uh, Dr. Somnath describes it, They've made it very rugged. So all these uh, various anomalies that could arise, they've calculated them. Of course, it's very difficult. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, anything could uh, turn it around. There could be a malfunctioning valve here or there, and you could run into major issues. But what they've done is, in each of these stages, these critical things, whether it's the propulsion, you, you know, making sure the thrusters, you have enough fuel, you have enough, uh, you know, if one fails, the other can take over. Uh, even the direction thing, the same thing with control and guidance. Last time there was a software error. The software could not because of the excess speed that came in. It could not calculate and it started tumbling out of control. So that they've built in and worked the algorithms and said, okay, if, if it is traveling at this speed, we have this much leeway. So they've given almost twice the leeway that they had last time. And finally, when the landing and the procedure of landing, 
There again, they've made sure that, okay, if we've not got, they've got enough fuel. So if we're not getting the right space, last time what happened was, as it started moving, it suddenly realized that it was at a great distance. It, the speed was wrong. So instead of decelerating, which is what you're trying to kill the, the acceleration that's there, it actually accelerated. And when, for, you know, the crash was almost immediate, uh, maybe 500 meters away from the actual landing site. So this time what they worked out is, okay, if you're not getting it, it's got enough sensors, enough uh, inertial guidance systems and everything else to say it's not happening, enough fuel to go and land. So I think what ISRO has done, and I think that's the reason why when you speak to these scientists is that they've worked out most of the contingencies. Of course, there's always the unknown unknown that could happen, as Dr. Sivan had told you. Uh, you know, in, in his interview, and that is something that no one can plan for. Lieutenant General A.K. Bhatt, Director General of the Indian Space Association, what could this lunar probe mean for India's space ambitions? You know, there are so many space tech firms that are now trying to do interesting things for India's space program, part of global space programs. What could this potentially mean for India's quest in space? Oh, definitely it will give a Philip and more opportunities because, you know, the next big thing in space is the lunar economy. And lunar economy means everything related to, as in the future, maybe a decade or more, when we make space stations, we make a colony, uh, we do mining there. For all that, there would be a lunar economy where private players would be involved. And in India, as you know, after June 2020, uh, the government has opened space to private players. We are, of course, in the nascent stage there. Uh, we've just had our suborbital sub launch. We have some of our startups who have made satellites which are there in space. But in the future, we would be seeing private players as partners of this lunar economy, which would be global and would, which would involve all activities, a lot of ro robos, maybe for mining, maybe construction activity, and many more. But that is where the future is. Dr. Amitabh Ghosh, sure. if you mine on the surface of the moon, what could you potentially get which is useful for the Earth? And this whole idea of colonizing the moon, which is being spoken of so nonchalantly, how much is this a matter of space and science fiction, and how much of it could be reality? I think 50% um, is science fiction. Um, I'll tell you what is possible and what is not possible. Okay, what you is what is possible is like say if you go to Antarctica now, um, I think a lot of nations maintain a whole year access to it. So people live in a habitation module. They are having pizza. They have a refrigerator. They're watching cable TV. It's just like on Earth. And you can have something on the moon like that. In addition to everything that you have on Earth, they'll have oxygen. That's what Jeff Bezos is trying through his company, Blue Origins. Now, that is rational and doable. That is what NASA could also do. That's what the space station is. It's 250 miles above the Earth. Uh, people live there. Um, 365 days, astronauts, they go come and do experiments. That is possible. Lunar economy is something, it's even a step further. So things like Disney World um, say it is possible. Elon Musk is developing something called Starship. Starship would reduce the cost of moon travel by maybe 1,000. So if you could buy and take a ticket to, to the moon for one crore, would you visit it once in your lifetime? Well, if you got a million customers like you, then there will be a tourism industry. Would you, Amitabh, go trust uh, Elon Musk to take you to the moon if you had a crore you wanted to spend on this? See, I am not into. I have a lot of astronaut friends, but you know, it's a actually not as exciting as it sounds. It's quite a dangerous thing. So you go to work <laughs> and you might not come back. So I prefer being a scientist on the ground. But um, but yeah, coming back to it, it is possible. If you thought of Disney World, uh, you see Disney World today when Walt Disney made his first pitch uh, as a venture capital thing uh, that I'm going to build this resort in the middle of nowhere, uh, where people would come to see a mouse. Well, it would have sound ridiculous, but it has happened today. So people do go there once in their lifetime in the U.S., right? So, so it's possible, but it is not a near-term natural progression. It is still science, science, science fiction. How many years out is this? 10 years, 15 years, 20 years? Is there a way of knowing? Elon Musk has so, a lot of ambition, uh, if, a lot of money. If, well, the money, he has to get 
market participation. He has to get the mass market. His money would not really be sufficient. It will depend. See, uh, he's testing Starship. I think he has at what, 16 failures, um, but he's still on the way to go. Starship is a, a critical component of the US return on 26. If his Starship uh, uh, is successful and it reduces the cost by a thousand percent, like it does, then the space frontier would suddenly be far, like wide open. Raj, you willing to shell out one crore rupees, sit on an Elon Musk starship somewhere to the moon? If I had a crore, but sure I would. <laughs> but I, I'd but just like to uh, you know, add to what uh, Amitabh said uh, and actually differ in some ways. Because I think, uh, uh, you know, we are looking at a climate change crisis that is there. This is only one plan. We only have planet, uh, you know, plan A. Right. What is your plan B? Plan B, obviously, is to find other planets, other places that are hospitable and see if we can do, uh, do things over there. And otherwise, the human race but perishes. But we haven't really found something so far. Yeah, but the starting point, the lunar gateway, as it's called, you know, though uh, he may say that, uh, look, colonizing the moon may not be the kind of thing that is there. It does give us a lot of opportunity because what uh, someone else was mentioning, I think Dr. Rajan was mentioning earlier, is that you need giant boosters to take anything up uh, beyond Earth because of the kind of atmosphere that is there and uh, the amount of thing that you have to break gravity uh, from, uh, you know, break free from gravity. At the moon, you don't have that problem. The moon has one-sixth of Earth's gravity. So if you start building things over there and say you want to go to Mars, right, so it breaks the journey. Otherwise, going to Mars just takes a long time. And then acclimatizing because Mars has its own uh, issues. So what it does, I think, is the reason why we're doing a lot of this, apart from just the fun of it or the, being at the cutting edge, is that there is tremendous amount of purpose in it. Apart from technologies that you and I can actually benefit from, let's not forget artificial intelligence, uh, you know, better materials, all that has benefited humankind tremendously because you're miniaturizing everything in space. Now comes the big thing. What if we can explore and look at other things? Moon, of course, has... You know, you never know where that, uh, they're talking of helium as a fuel, uh, uh, rare minerals that could be there that you could mine and do it. But beyond that, going to Mars, going and exploring other things, you need to get that kind of experience and Moon is the ideal place to sit and do all the, the When thing you mine learn. Dr. P.K. Ghosh on the surface of the Moon, what do you get which is of huge value back home? Now, apart from the minerals, you know, may I just take a step back Sure. And I think this point which I wanted to include in the discussion and has not been included by probably any of the news channels is uh, you kept mentioning, you know, uh, what is different between Chandrayaan 2 and Raj, of course, uh, uh, laid down what are the objectives of Chandrayaan 3. But one of the biggest dif differences that the ISRO has undergone in two and three is the change of mindset. And I think that was, uh, is neither being discussed, nor has it been, nor has it come up. In the two, that is Chandrayaan two, the idea was that they were going to be successful and they were going to come up with all these experiments, which was a foregone conclusion. So they had prepared themselves more for success. In this, that is Chandrayaan 3, they are more prepared to face the failures or the shortcomings. And that is why that, you know, there is plan A, there is plan B, and the redundancy factor is more. So one of the biggest things is that there is a change in mindset in the ISRO, which unfortunately does not really, everybody says, okay, fine, if one of the, equipment doesn't work, what happens? Well, we go on to plan B. In some cases, you can't go on to plan B. Uh, in most cases, you can. So this is something that has been worked on and the scientific experiments and et cetera are really coming on later. So I just thought uh, this uh, probably should be on the table. No, it's very important. The more redundancy there is, the more backup plans you have, potentially the higher the chance of success. But as Raj Singhapa said, there are unknown unknowns. You never really know, as Dr. Amitabh Ghosh found out, what you come up across, whether it's just a parachute or sand and the rover overturns, all kinds of stuff can happen. Uh, General Butt, before we conclude, your final words on what is it that you would be most anxious about when you look between now and landing around 6 p.m. the 23rd, 
what is the number one worry and concern for you? Oh, I am I am an optimistic person, and I believe that this landing will take place successfully. You know, there are uh, n number of challenges we can talk of, risks which are there. Many of them we have talked of, but I'm I'm very positive with the way we have picked up the right lessons from Chandrayaan two and applied them in Chandrayaan three, as as has been mentioned by Raj and many other speakers. I am very confident and optimistic. Okay, Amitabh Ghosh, what's your number one concern? About what would spook you the most between now and spook? 6 p.m. tomorrow? But see. I think we will not have any access. I mean, it it'll, it'll, is an automated sequence. I mean, I don't think anyone can control uh, that. Two hours before, there will be a decision point where they will take whether they will de ISRO will decide whether to go now or 27th August. But once they, I think, start the sequence, it's an automated sequence. I mean, they cannot stop it. So, one, so I don't think there are any concerns per se. I mean, it's. I, I don't think we are in any, any control here. I mean, ISRO will have to decide and then they choose a time, uh, tomorrow or 27th. You know, if they decide not to land tomorrow, what does the Chandrayaan do between tomorrow and the 27th? Like, because right now it's apparently just 25 kilometers from the surface of the moon. Does it stay right. in that same area? Yeah, it has an elliptical orbit that it keeps going. So what it does is uh, it'll keep moving. And then, then they'll find another, like they said, Sunday on 27th to come back and land. So it has to, everything has to be timed. So if there is so a problem... It pulls back. Yeah, no, it, it actually continues with the, with the orbit. What it does, it's moving at a 30 kilometer to 154 kilometer orbit like that, right? It's going around there. So when it has to land, uh, which is what it does, it then, uh, you know, decelerates. There is a, what is called a kill phase where they begin to uh, lower the speed. It's traveling at 6,000 kilometers per hour. That's five times, uh, you know, uh, max speed. So it has to bring it down slowly. So if it doesn't happen, it continues in that orbit. It doesn't escape the, uh, the moon's gravity. It keeps with that pace. And uh, th then the next great window opens, which they believe is 27th. It will come down and land. But I, I'm pretty, you know, I'm willing to bet, you know, uh, <laughs> Rahul. What are you that, betting? Uh, you know, last time uh, when we did the moon mission on the cover idea today, we had a bet and I won the champion. I won't say with whom. But I think this time I'm betting a champion that they will do it and they'll do it successfully. Well, I'm not betting against you. So once you <laughs> cock that champagne, I hope to be there to get my glass of bubbly as well. But let's just hope it goes well and we can all pop some champagne. I'm not sure whether we'll have to say this on TV, but what the hell, it's a good moment. So if it does land, we will open some champagne. So thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. And uh, let's cheer for Chandrayaan and let's all hope India's moonshot this time is successful. What fun, what excitement. I can only imagine the nervousness and the anxiety and the concern of our team at ISRO. And we're all wishing them all the very best. Let's uh, slip into a break. I'll have a lot more for you. When we come back, back in a moment, stay with us. You're watching the news track. As Chandrayaan 3 circles the moon, India's billion breaths are held. Our spacecraft is in final descent and every Indian heart beats for it as India's historic moon landing nears for our scientists and their moon craft. Your love, your prayers, your wishes matter. Come on, India. Cheer for Chandrayaan. Quality today in Delhi 151 in Mumbai 58 in Kolkata 85 in Bangalore 59 
in Chennai 114. in hyderabad 103 make your media plans smarter with india today live tv on your connected devices amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers to advertise mail us at sales@ajtag.com From an imported rocket in 1963 to a made in India Chandrayaan 3 that cost less than the Hollywood film Interstellar, the Indian space mission has come a long way. As anticipation builds around Chandrayaan's moonshot, sky is the limit for India's space odyssey. Faster, I'm in the direction. So, is it the same thing or is it different? इंडिया स्प्राइट सोर्स हाई ऊपर से भारत कैसा दिखता है आपको एस्ट्रोनॉट राकेश शर्मा बिकम्स द फर्स्ट इंडियन टू एक्सप्लोर सेलेस्टियल रेल इन अ जॉइंट स्पेस मिशन विद वॉट वॉज देन सोवियत यूनियन जरूरत से ज्यादा खा रहे हैं हम But the country achieved its first astronomical feat much before in 1963. Naika Pache, a two-stage sounding rocket imported from the United States, blasted off from a fishing village near Tiruvananthapuram in Kerala. Over the last six decades, India's space program has evolved enormously. From launch vehicles for satellites, insats for telecom. broadcasting meteorology remote sensing for satellite imagery to research and development in space from aryabhat a satellite designed and fabricated indigenously and launched from a soviet rocket in 1975 to now on course to reach the moon and become the first country to explore its south pole Off, Here we have a majestic lift off of LBM 3M4 rocket carrying India's prestigious Chandrayaan 3 spacecraft. Because that's a place where we can get uh, sufficiently enough solar heat and uh, light for power generation. If you go further, there is a possibility that you will not get the full daytime use utility. 15 years ago, India's first moon mission performed a detailed search of evidence of water and chemical composition of certain lunar rocks. The sky is the limit for the country's space ambitions. India's first space-based mission to study the sun. Aditya L1 nearing its launch date by the end of August or early September. Currently, uh, payloads are getting integrated with the satellite, and uh, it will go through a series of testing, including thermovac, vibration, so many things. And uh, after that, we will will have the launch. The, it goes in a PSLV, so that will send a commercial launch. So after that, we are already starting another building a uh, next PSLV, uh, and we are targeting by August end that uh, Aditya can go. ISRO working on the Gaganyaan mission, India's first manned space flight program. blazing its way through the earth's final frontier india establishes itself as a space power and a master of space engineering bureau report india today this is where we wrap up the news track tonight the india today newsroom as i'm sure are all our viewers are cheering for the chandrayaan do watch our live and continuing coverage all the way from now till the time chandrayaan 3 lands and then even beyond goodbye good night जी के साथ 
इट वॉज अमेजिंग वर्किंग विद हिम ही बिकम्स ए डिफरेंट पर्सन जब स्टार्ट कैमरा एक्शन मैं बोलता हूँ आपको धार एक तरफ बाकी सब एक तरफ बहुत सारी चीजों के बारे में बात करने के लिए आपसे सो फर्स्ट लेट मी बिगिन बाई आस्किंग यू इट्स बीन फोर्टी थ्री ईयर्स फॉर यू हमने वो छोटा सा आपका क्लिप भी देखा ऑनलाइन जो आपने डाला था एंड इट वॉज इट रियली टच मी सो आई वॉन्ट टू स्टार्ट by asking how has been your journey this 43 years what were the highlights of this journey uh matlab main aisa main dekhu to sirf ek hi bol sakta hu bhagwan ka jitna shukriya ada karu kam hai kyunki 43 years pehle jab hi main gaon se aake pehle ek saal job kiya job mein kuch nahi kar paya to fir main stuntman bana to mere ko malum nahi tha journey kahan pe leke jayegi main to सर्वाइवल के लिए स्टैंडमैन बन गया था पैसे मिलेंगे रोटी मिलेगी तो रहने की कोई जगह नहीं थी पर आगे ऐसे जैसा भगवान ने डेस्टनी चाहा तो अच्छे लोग मिलते गए रास्ता दिखता गया थोड़ा सीखने को मिला फिर करते करते नाइन्टी में एक्शन डायरेक्टर बन गया फिर अच्छे लोग मिले अच्छे लोगों के साथ काम करने का मौका मिला सीखने का मौका मिला में आपने पहली साउथ मलयालम फिल्म मलयालम की थी उसके बारे में थोड़ा बताइए एंड देन नाउ यू स्टिल कंटिन्यू डूइंग साउथ फिल्म्स जैसे अभी रिसेंटली पोनी सेल्वन भी आपने किया था वन एंड टू बोथ आई थी तो प्लीज उसके बारे में बताइए वो साउथ जर्नी आपकी जैसे मैं मतलब मैं डेस्टनी पे बहुत विश्वास करता हूँ कि ना जैसा मैं स्टंटमैन भी बना इट वाज डेस्टनी कुछ लोग जहाँ पे पेइंग गेस्ट रहता था मिल गए लड़के पंजाबी उन्होंने स्टंटमैन बना दिया हाँ। फिर ये एक्शन डायरेक्टर भी 90 में मैं तो एज ए स्टंटमैन शूटिंग कर रहा था एक दिन तो एक प्रोडक्शन मैनेजर थे पहचानते थे फोन होते नहीं थे मैं उधर चौल में रहता था आदर्श नगर में तो वहाँ पर मेरे घर पर जाके मालूम किया मैं कहाँ पर शूटिंग कर रहा हूँ तो फिल्मस्तान में था तो रात को तम्बी का नाथम डायरेक्टर जो थे इंदर जालम के उनको लेके आ गए मेरे पास तो उनको क्या था उनके एक्शन डायरेक्टर आने वाले थे केरला से वो बीमार पड़ गए तो उनको नेक्स्ट डे एक्शन शूट करना था तो तम्बी कनाथ हम जी क्या थे उनको मलयाली यूनिट था तो उनको हिंदी नहीं आती थी उनको चाहिए था जो आदमी इंग्लिश जिसको आती हो तो मेरी उस टाइम पहली बार पढ़ाई काम आई कि मैं इंग्लिश लिटरेचर में एम ए किया था तो उस हाँ। time politics over congress leader rahul gandhi's latest visit to ladakh and his claims there that china has illegally occupied india's grazing land and india isn't doing enough those uh, that statement has led to an escalating war of words the bjp slamming mr gandhi claiming he was allegedly making false claims misleading the country other political parties including shiv sena are demanding that the modi government put a clear picture before the country just why are these remarks that rahul gandhi makes always getting into some kind of a political controversy is he getting under the skin of the bjp or is he simply shooting off from the hip take a look at this report congress leader rahul gandhi on ladakh visit has raked up china issue to attack modi government rahul questioned the issue of border security He accused Prime Minister Modi of making false claims about China not occupying Indian territory. Rahul quoted claims by locals about Chinese menace. Over here the concern is of course the land that has been taken away by China uh, and people here have been affected by it uh, in a big way because their grazing lands have been taken away uh, and also lack of connectivity here. cellular connectivity so congress and allies were quick to back rahul gandhi pura desh bol raha hai lekin pradhan mantri ko chin ko bachana hai pradhan mantri chin ko certificate dena chahte hain kya majboori hai hame nahi malum pura vishv hairan hai 
कि प्रधानमंत्री किस तरह से चीन की ढाल बनकर खड़े हुए राहुल जी ने बात कही है कि चाइना ने अपनी जमीन कब्जे में लिया है उसके ऊपर प्रधानमंत्री हो या डिफेंस मिनिस्टर हो कोई लोगों को गुमराह करने की जरूरत नहीं है सच बताइए The government countered Rahul Gandhi's claim and said that Nehru government was chanting India chini bhai bhai while China was usurping Indian land. Jis Congress party ne Hindi chini bhai bhai ka mala jab ke 45000 square kilometer Bharat mata ki dharti ko Chin ko de diya apne gireban mein jhaake. External Affairs Minister Jay Shankar termed Rahul a habitual liar. सर राहुल गांधी ने सवाल उठाया चाइना को लेकर के किस तरीके से देखिए वो तो राहुल गांधी की अपरानी आदत है इसमें क्या नहीं द बीजेपी विच अर्लियर मॉक राहुल गांधी बाइक ट्रिप एज एडवर्टीजमेंट ऑफ मोदी गवर्नमेंट रोड इंफ्रा प्रोजेक्ट इन लद्दाख वो क्विक टू हिट बैक Good evening hello and welcome you're with the news today this is your prime time destination news newsmakers talking points the big talking point 24 hours to go to the historic moon landing we're going to track that all the way dr surendra pal distinguished scientist from isro will be joining me in a moment to tell us the mood there also is kcr still telangana's front runner the battle for telangana is the next big fight we'll tell you more on that plus among our special guest vishwanathan anand the one and only vishi will join us on india's latest chess prodigy all that and more coming up but first the nine headlines at nine less than 24 hours to go for chandrayaan's 3 moon touchdown isro ready with plan b in case conditions unfavorable prime minister to watch landing live virtually from south africa Delhi rapist bureaucrat and wife attempt to evade arrest foil CCTV video shows the bureaucrat at a church days after FIR was filed against him Delhi women panel chief seeks a meeting with home minister Amit Shah Prime Minister Modi lands for the BRICS summit in Johannesburg big suspense over bilateral with Chinese president Xi Jinping no plans yet says the Indian side High drama in Telangana a day after Chief Minister and BRS Chief K Chandrasekhar Rao announces first list of candidates a BRS MLA breaks down after being denied a ticket BJP mocks KCR for contesting from two seats Superstar Rajni Khan defends his gesture of bowing down to touch UP Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath's feet says it's a habit Congress says Rajni Yogi meet calls it a courtesy call to next PM Bihar VIP culture on display ambulance blocked for chief minister Nitish Kumar's convoy despite patients family crying while Bihar top cop is seen holding an umbrella for RJD Supremo Lalu Yadav Venka rushes to placate angry onion traders in Maharashtra agencies to buy 5 lakh tons at record high prices onions across India to be sold at 25 rupees a kilo to bring down eye watering prices India's team chess prodigy Pragananda and Magnus Carlsen settle for a draw in game 1 of the World Chess Championship final. An 18 charred bodies found as wildfires continue to spread across Greece. But first the big story Chandrayaan's landing in nearly 20 hours less than 24 hours to go for the moon landing Chandrayaan on the verge of landing on the moon the moon just 25 kilometers now below Vikram lander PM the prime minister to watch the landing live virtually from South Africa where he is at the BRICS summit but all eyes therefore on ISRO on Chandrayaan which is now just 25 kilometers away from moon all expectations that that soft landing 
will take place tomorrow just after 6 p.m. Live coverage from ISRO will begin a little after 5. In fact, an entire country is on the edge as that final countdown begins to Chandrayaan's freeze landing. The Vikram lander 25 kilometers away from the moon. 6.04 p.m. tomorrow, it will attempt to land on the lunar surface. ISRO saying the mission fully on track, all systems working perfectly. Just in case the conditions are less than ideal, a plan B is also ready. It's our top story. India's moon mission is hours away from a historic climax. Chandrayaan's Vikram lander is approaching the moon rendezvous. Saying hello to Chandrama, snapping breathtaking images from close vicinity, showing moon in all its glory. With details of the unexplored far site, complete with billionaire-old craters. Indian Space Agency asserted that the mission is fully on track. The system is undergoing regular checks to ensure a smooth touchdown. It is almost similar to what we uh, designed or developed for Chandrayaan 2, except for instead of Orbiter now, because Orbiter is anyway working fine right. and it is still useful and it is giving a lot of in important data which will be utilized for Chandrayaan 3 landing also. Mm -hmm. So we decided that uh, we, we Orbiter will be replaced by a propulsion module. Uh, which, which duty is to take it to the orbit of moon surface. ISRO is not taking any chances, especially after crash of the Russian moon mission. Keeping another landing site ready for Sunday touchdown if parameters aren't ideal on Wednesday. Former ISRO chief K. Sivan broke down the final manoeuvres moments before the planned touchdown. First of all, uh, Luna uh, mission failure and uh, this one they are not related. Luna actually that is have its own system, its own uh, the sensor, thrusters and it may have its own characteristics. But uh, we have our own system, our own thruster, our own sensors which it, it has been functioning very nicely and without any problem and uh, till now we are uh, uh, achieved what we want in a perfect way and I'm sure that this will repeat on 23rd also so we'll get a good uh, uh, landing and uh, we are not getting uh, uh, disturbed by the Luna 25 failure we are, they are not related they are not a similar system they are different system Okay. So we are confident that we are uh, will be able to achieve without any problem. A billion cheers, prayers, and wishes are meanwhile pouring in as India roots for Chandrayaan three. एक बहुत बड़ा इतिहास भारत के सभी विशेषज्ञों ने हमारे वैज्ञानिकों ने रचा है और प्रधानमंत्री जी के नेतृत्व में भारत नई ऊंचाइयां तो छू ही रहा था भारत का तिरंगा केवल देश के अंदर नहीं लेकिन विश्व पटल पर पर अब हमारी यही कोशिश है कि वो तिरंगा चांद पे भी गाड़ के रखा जाए स्पेशल पूजाज आर बीइंग हेल्ड इन टेंपल्स एंड नमाज इज बीइंग ऑफर्ड इन मॉस्क ऑल फॉर चंद्रयान सक्सेस the lander is expected to touch down on Moon's South Polar region at 6.04 p.m. on Wednesday. We wish India a grand success in conquering the Moon. With Akshita Nandagopal in Bengaluru and Milan Sharma in Ahmedabad, Bureau Report, India Today. Well, let's go straight across to Dr. Surender Pal, Distinguished Scientist, Associate Director, Program Director, Satellite Navigation Program at ISRO Satellite Center, Appreciate your joining us, Dr. Paul. Just give us a sense of what this means to the scientific community involved with ISRO. Less than 24 hours to go. What does this mean the next 24 hours for someone who's been connected with ISRO over the years? Is this a culmination of a lot of hard work over several years now? So, uh, Rajiv, I'll reply in two parts. One is, as a technologist, uh, I'm quite confident 
and I also see that whatsoever development have been taking place over the last 50 years, the fruits of there are coming up. As far as an Indian is concerned, uh, well, I, I'm quite confident that we will land, and uh, I am quite elated that as an Indian, uh, I mean, uh, when we land there, we leave our imprints in our Raj Chinna. Ashok emblem will be there, the Isro emblem will be there, of when the rower rolls down, all the experiments work wonderfully well, and so, uh, the redundancies which have been built uh, in the, inside the software, as well as hardware, the simulations, which are extensive simulations have been done in the software and the hardware, mm -hmm. all those is, uh, you know, they give me confidence that we will be successful. Some of the things have been over designed also, you know, like propulsion has been put more this time. The battery capacities have been increased both in the lander, in the propulsion module, also on the rover. The rover has got 10 ampere hour thing. And uh, for 14 days, it will work. I see from the chairman ISRO that we will definitely land even if uh, things are failing. You know, this time analysis has been done based on failure mode analysis, not on success based. Another thing is that uh, we have got four thrusters which are quite uh, powerful, 850 Newton meters, which uh, because thrust can be controlled, what we call this viewing. And even if two works, nothing else works, it will land. That's what the chairman used to say. And I'm quite confident about it. So what you are saying, what you are telling us is that we have learned from the mistakes that might have been made during Chandrayaan 2. And even if something may not work, God forbid, tomorrow, there is enough backup to ensure that there will be a soft landing on the moon. So history in the making. Yes, uh, I must say that not only simply backup, we have got almost triple backup. Now, let me tell you that uh, this is the only mission. Usually, no space technologist works for uh, more than three sigma. This has been, most of the systems have been tested to uh, six sigma. Six sigma means one mistake in one million. So that sort of accuracies are there. Things have been over-designed, uh, both power, propulsion, telemetry, where we have increased the rates from 200 to 500 kilobit, and uh, there are double redundancy in the communication link. Also, if, I mean, the sensors which are there, like you know, laser mm -hmm. uh, Doppler velocity meter, the hazard avoidance, detection and avoidance, camera, then uh, carbon, uh, uh, la altimeter, laser altimeter, off camera, front camera, mm -hmm. and gyros, which are calibrated just before landing. There's a navigation period of 10 seconds, where all the things will be calibrated in operate manner, absolute manner, and they'll be calibrated with the star sensors. So the position accuracy is also will be there. Less, now also, this time the area they have increased, you know, from two, 500 meters by 500 to 2.5 kilometers by mm -hmm. uh, 4 kilometers. When they land it, the algorithm takes care. Total system has been divided into grids of 24 meter by 24 meters. Out of the so many grids, 20 grids are selected. Out of 20 grids, eight grid points have been selected, and one no one point is more than 100 meters away. So the lander will hover like in a, a helicopter, and uh, it can go from one place to another place in 100 meters. Just one final question, Doctor. Uh, there could be a plan B, we are told, because of weather conditions. And 27th August is that new date in case things don't work out tomorrow. But from what you are telling me, there is a very minimal chance of using plan B. Am I correct? 6.04 p.m. tomorrow, all going well, should be the landing? Yeah, I am quite confident about that. Now, let us talk about the 27th August. If it is there, then, uh, you know, it, it has got enough propulsion and the margins in the battery and the total power system, it can come back. But this time, it will be landing on the westward, so that still you get the 14 uh, days uh, you know, uh, I mean, sunlight. Mm -hmm. So it's not that if we don't land on 23rd, we will be losing some time. So it is on westward, 14 days will be still available. Okay. And that's a plan B, you know. In space technology, we always keep a plan B. It's not that we always go by one plan only. Okay, let me leave it there. Uh, thanks very much for joining us, Doctor. We'll be tracking this all the way. It's our big story. You can cheer for Chandrayaan. 
uh, go on to the India Today website, find out how you can send your messages to ISRO scientists. Big day ahead and we'll have more on that later in the show. But let's turn to tonight's top political story, which today is coming from Telangana, the next big election battleground state. Just a day after the Telangana Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao became the first of the bloc to announce a candidate list for the 2023 winter elections, high drama has erupted with his own MLAs who have not been given tickets lashing out. Not just that, the BJP and the Congress are questioning the Telangana Chief Minister for choosing to contest from two seats this time. So can KCR achieve a hat-trick or not? That's going to be the big focus. Is South India still BJP Mukt? Take a look. main rival in Congress is BJP. main rival in Congress is BJP. 95 to 105, Assembly elections in Telangana are yet to be announced, but CMK Chandrasekhar Rao is first off the block. The BRS chief has already released a list of candidates to be fielded in 115 out of the total 119 constituencies, giving his party the first mover advantage. Party decided and I am contesting. What is the objection for you? <laughs> KCR is facing a double challenge this time. He is fighting both BJP and Congress, which are hoping to encash anti-incumbency against the BRS. He lashed out at both rivals on Monday when he released the list. Confidently, it's a joke of the century. I can only say that it's a joke of the century. The BJP, which sees Telangana as a potential growth state, taunted KCR for contesting from two seats. The Congress claims KCR is scared of losing the elections. Telangana Rashtra President Chandrasekhar Rao sitting under seat le vaka poodo. Gajwal to partu kamaare dilo poti chestu na dante. Chandrasekhar Rao gari gontu lo bhayamu vote me spastanga kani pichinde ninna Surya peeta lo bhayanga sabalo maatalu. Meanwhile, hours after BRS released the list, a BRS MLA broke down in front of party workers after he was denied ticket. Interestingly, the BRS is neither a member of NDA or the opposition's Grand Alliance India and insists that 2024 remains a focus point. In 2018, KCR had advanced state elections, catching the opposition by surprise, giving his party the early mover advantage. The move also neutralized the Modi factor that would have come into play if polls were held along with Lok Sabha polls. Will announcing candidate list many weeks in advance similarly click for KCR? With Abdul Bashir and Apurva Jay Chandran, Bureau Report, India Today. So is KCR still the front runner in the battle for Telangana? Will BJP Mukt South India change? Is Congress KCR's main rival in Telangana? These are some of the questions we will raise. We are joined by Krishna Sagar Rao, the BJP spokesperson, Ravulla Sridhar Reddy, BRS leader, and Madhu Gaud Yakshi, the Congress's spokesperson. Appreciate all of you joining us. Uh, before I come to you, let me bring the X factors of Telangana to our viewers and understand why this is an important election. Telangana's X factors, 10-year anti-incumbency against KCR, who benefits from it? KCR's numerous welfare schemes, will the farmer vote, the poor vote, stay with him? Can the Congress break KCR's support among Muslims, Dalits and OBCs? Will the BJP grow, not just in Hyderabad, but outside it? And will the Congress and the BJP end up dividing the anti-KCR vote? And a sixth X factor, the money factor, who has the maximum resources. Let's raise those questions and go straight to you first, Ravulla Sridhar Reddy, 
your chief minister contesting two seats is that a sign of nervousness that he is not confident despite claiming that he is going to sweep the election then why contest from two seats rajiv contesting from two elections two seats will show that you know we are more stronger compared to the past that's why we are uh, honorable cm is contesting from two seats as a you know party decision they no, no, party decision, but if you are so confident, why do you need two seats? If he is the if he is the top gun, decision. then why is he worried? It's a party decision. We have our own strategy. There are conventions in nine. There are many times you have seen Vajpayee ji contesting from two seats in ninety one, Adwani ji contesting from Lucknow and sorry Delhi and Gandhi Naga, and uh, Sonia Gandhi ji was contesting from you know two seats in nineteen ninety nine, Bareilly and Amethi. There are so many instances where. The senior most leaders of the party, and here are supremo contesting from two seats. What's the problem for the opposition? If you have strength, mm -hmm. if you think that you can win us, you know, field your candidates. Where are your candidates? I'm asking Congress Party and BJP. Where are you? Just by you know conducting uh, uh, high decibel you know press conferences will not answer the public questions, right? We have declared 115 seats, and we will be declaring four more seats in very short span. Where yeah. are you, Congress and BJP? Okay, so, let, let, let them respond. Krishna Sagar Rao, the open challenge. Where are your seats? Here is a chief minister four months before an election already announcing his candidates. Does it suggest that KCR at the end of the day controls the chess pieces in this Telangana chess board? He's already off the mark. See, Rajdeep, uh, there are no prizes for coming early in declaring candidates. Sometimes it can even work against you and it can even yield as a self goal mm -hmm. uh, and we really hope that it happens uh, because uh, you know going ahead and announcing 115 candidates is not equal to winning that many mm -hmm. uh, while kcr was saying that number two is that it shows more of a desperation than preparation because if you're prepared you don't need to do it four years i mean four months when you had four years of governance in this term Another five years, actually four years in the first term too. So if you did not uh, foresee anything happening to you and your seats, why would you rush into it? Number three is that he fears backlash from his own MLAs. I told you as he lost options, and that is uh, the desperation part. If you don't have options, how can you call yourself successful as someone who can win back? See, he himself, KCR himself, has quoted and many times leaked that there were 35 uh, MLAs. He would not want to contest uh, this election. He would not want to uh, nominate them for this election. Now, why did he go back on that? He said in one of the uh, press conferences that 35% of commission has been taken from certain schemes of the government by a few MLAs. Now, why those MLAs haven't been uh, you know, uh, removed from the list which he has actually announced? So he's under pressure. He's uh, in a political compulsion so that he wants to keep the folks together, the entire folk of uh, right, uh, the you, BRS, so, so that he doesn't get into a you're saying, kind of uh, a right, let, Let's keep our interventions a little shorter. You're saying basically that KCR is nervous and therefore has been forced to renominate most of his sitting candidates, uh, fearing that they would rebel. You want to respond very quickly, Rahul Ashita Reddy, to that. Not only is the chief minister contesting two seats, he has renominated almost 95% of his candidates. Does that suggest that he is not worried about anti incumbency at the local level, or he is worried that if I don't nominate someone, they will switch sides, as already some of them have indicated to, uh, today? Those who have not got tickets are planning to join Congress or BJP? Rajdeep, that is not weakness. You know, announcing the candidates. You know, close to three months, more than three months early before the elections is strength. Mm -hmm. You know, the confidence that we have on our people, the confidence that, you know, we have delivered in the past nine years. Mm -hmm. And people know that. And here, you know, instead of speaking much, actions speak louder than words. We have declared our can candidates. We know what we have done in the past nine years. I am asking BJP, where are you? Answer me that. No, but why, but why, they, no, yeah, why, why do you want them to declare their candidates so early? The election we don't have the time we wish to. See, Rajdeep, they don't Rajdeep. have. BJP will be, this. BJP is actually out of race in Telangana. We don't even want to consider them that 
they are a competition to us. So you are saying Congress is your main rival? Are you saying Rahul Shridhar Reddy, Congress is your main rival? To certain extent, because Congress, you know, one minute, Mr. Rao. Because of this Karnataka election result and all, mm -hmm. these days are they are doing some activities. But even Congress also is not a match to KCR and our our party today. They both will be fighting for a distant second position. I am very clearly telling you. Okay, sir, these are your candidates. Now you are asking me why have you declared the candidates? That's my strength. We okay. have people. You made we your point. Confidence. You made your point. Let me take that to Madhu Yakshigaud. According to uh, the BRS, and I've heard that from KCR as well. This is a battle for second place. He believes that the, even the anti-KCR vote will get divided between Congress and BJP. He is comfortable. What is the Congress going to do to build on the Karnataka strategy? We are told that there will be now Dalit and Muslim outreach programs. What specifically does the Congress intend to do in Telangana to try and narrow the gap with KCR? Razdeep, you have seen, you are my good friend, you are a learned journalist. In one of the state I was in charge, we were an incumbent government and knowing chief minister seat itself was in danger, we asked chief minister to contest from two seats. Earlier, N.T. Ramarao contested as the chief minister in three places, he lost. So KCR first contesting from two seats itself shows that nervousness and that is losing. Second, 10 years as myself, my own experience, two, two elections, seven as an MP. Third election is a big task. There's a huge hint in incumbency, even if you do best of the best thing. I was faced for Telangana, achieving a Telangana state from the Congress side. So what I'm trying to say here, this is the anti-incumbency, then the second part, the 95 MLS But Madhu Yakshik out that anti-incumbency will the get other divided kada, between other, you other and the kada, BJP. Other, no, no, wait, 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 wait. Razdeep, Razdeep, no, that's where I'm coming here. First, there's no hope for other second level leaders or anyone. Third, the BJP is completely gone down after Karnataka election results. Every month, I am tracking every week we are doing the surveys. BJP's vote percentage has gone down. Now, whatever you are seeing on BJP and TR, my TRS friends mm -hmm. arguing, it's like a WWF. They are together. Mm -hmm. BJP friend, my friend Krishna Sagar is very happy that TRS has announced candidates because they don't have to do anything. They are together. In 2018, the BJP believed that TRS KCR statement agreed for an early elections and supported TRS candidates in some places where they are not going to win and they transferred the BJP over them. This is told by the BJP top leader of Telangana itself. So here they are together, people believing you, and seeing through what happened You are claiming, Karnataka, you are claiming on my show, then just a minute, Madhu Yakshigao, you are claiming shifting, on my show that the BJP is B shifting, team. The BRS, BJP together. You are claiming that the BJP is the B team of the BRS in Telangana. BJP. Absolutely. And you, you have seen okay. already MIM is, AMM, KCR announced that MIM is their alliance partner. So that MIM is doing <clears throat> elsewhere in the country to help the BJP. Mm -hmm. And BJP, BRS, MIM together and people are seeing through. Honestly, I myself was feared before Karnataka results. We thought like BJP reached second after 2018 elections. BJP has winning That's by elections. Mm -hmm. And I thought like BJP is really emerging in Telangana. Now it's gone, completely dead. Okay, let the, me. The state let, changing sir, state sir, you, president is gone down so bad to the okay, BJP. Let me, let and me people bring in are Krish completely believing that BJP, BRS together. Okay, let, let me bring in uh, 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 Mr. Krishna Sagar Rao. Because the fact is, Mr. Krishna Sagar Rao, you've changed your president, party president. There have been a lot of changes within the BJP and the belief is after Karnataka, the BJP is on the back foot in Telangana. You are losing Kader to the Congress in some places, to the BRS in other places. And here the Congress is accusing you now of being the B team. You are the B team of the BRS. So actually from being a competitor, as you did well in the Lok Sabha elections of 2019 in Telangana, you've gone a step back is the general belief on the ground. See, this is a manufactured perception by Congress and they're trying very hard at it. My friend Madhu is actually peddling the same, uh, you know, same story. No, so why did uh, you because, change your leadership? See, uh, <laughs> no, if you were so confident, why have you just changed your leadership in, in Telangana? Why? 
Krishna, why did you change your... No, no, Mr. Yakshik out, let him speak. Not just me asking. No, no, Madhu, you must let him speak. Madhu, please, your voice will go down. Give an answer. Yeah, let him speak. Madhu, let me give an answer. Yeah, please go ahead. If at all anybody is together, Rajdeep, it is Congress and TRS. And their their unity and their relationship is not from today, from 2001 onwards. 2004 election, they fought together. 2009 election, they fought together. KCR was a minister. When Telangana bill was presented, they didn't have strength and... Sushma Swaraji and Rajnaji as president and LOP have ensured that uh, Telangana is achieved with the bill being passed. But KCR goes to Sonia Gandhi and touches her feet. He doesn't come to Sushma Swaraj and Rajnath Singh. They are natural partners. As mm-hmm. Prime Minister Modi says, they are family dynasty, corruption and appeasement kind of parties. Both of them are mirror images. Now, Rajdeep, you asked me, uh, why did we change the president? It is our system. Three years after, presidents change in our party. So, because the party had another strategy mm-hmm. uh, and to work with Sanjay elsewhere, which he's already been uh, deputed to, Krishan Reddy, Krishan Reddy, who's been the ace leader of our party and happens to be a union minister, has been brought in to ensure the win no, of so what is your no, So what is your strategy, Krishna Sagar Rao? Because there's a general feeling, I repeat, that the BJP in southern India is now struggling. Karnataka was one example. Telangana, the Congress is banking on a large Muslim Dalit consolidation. Where does the BJP fit in now? Outside Hyderabad, pockets of Hyderabad. How are you going to grow? Uh, see, we are not a party of uh, one-night stands, uh, Rajdeep. We are in it. You know, party is eternal. As long as a nation exists, we exist. And we have, as you've seen, has grown to a certain stage which no other party has grown till now in this country. We have beaten the good old party, Congress, uh, hands down. We are in 17 states today. No, you are. We have to come into South. If we have to come into South, Mm -hmm. it might take a little time. But for Telangana, we have already uh, entered. Karnataka, we have uh, been there before. So South hasn't banned us. South has given us a big opportunity and Telangana will be the second gateway for the entry into South, uh, apart from Puducherry we already have. Mm-hmm. So where did we not touch South and okay. where did we fail in the Southern So strategy? you're saying that we'll Telangana will be your we'll second, your we'll Telangana will be Telangana. your second gateway to the South. I want to get you Ravula Sridhar Reddy just to give me your numbers. TRS in 2014 got 63 of the 119 seats, clear majority. 2018, you went up to 88 seats and your vote percentage went up to 46. Give me a realistic number. You have to accept there is an element of anti-incumbency after 10 years. What is your realistic number this time? Rajdeep, after 10 years, I cannot say it as an anti-incumbency. I don't accept it. There may be little dissatisfaction here and there, but we can correct it. And people are very clear. I just want want to tell you very clearly, Mm -hmm. both these parties has no agenda. If they go to the people, what will they say? They haven't done anything to the state of Telangana. No, they are saying that this is family Raj. They are saying that there is family Raj in Telangana. They are accusing you of corruption in Telangana. And they are saying that people have not benefited. They have been saying from 2014, there were many elections which we fought. They have been telling the same story. And BRS is winning all these elections. Number three, and we don't have to have any, you know, B team in Telangana. Mm-hmm. We are the A team of Telangana people, and they know we work for them. These two parties are known for, you know, good press conferences detailing that we are in 17 states. Congress will say we won. These stories are not going to work out. Okay. In Telangana. You're saying I want to ask them. Finally, Rajdeep, what's, finally, your finally, what's your number? What's your number out finally, of 119? How much will, will you get? Be, we will be, as our president said, we will be between 95 and 105. There is no ambiguity in okay, it. Okay, 95 to 105 out of 190. Finally, finally, Ma- Madhu Yakshigaut. Finally, finally, finally. Yes. You're challenging my, my leader that, you know, he's contesting from yeah, two Rajdeep. seats. Mm-hmm. I welcome both Congress and Rajdeep. BJP presidents. If you feel you are strong, you have strength, you are welcome to contest and my leader or your your people, your leaders. Right. Important also are welcome to contest in two seats. Uh, Madhu Yakshigaut. Madhu Yakshigaut. One minute, sir. No, you no, don't have candidates, sir. You don't have candidates. You said that again. Madhu Yakshigaut, your number for the Congress. Give me a number. In Karnataka, you gave me a number. You are almost right. Now you give me a number for uh, Telangana. What is your number this time? Yeah. Multiple sources indicating our own 
assumption also or our own feedback getting we are crossing 80 seats rajdeep 80 Secondly, seats their own trs party mla yesterday yeah 80 plus brs party mla yesterday accused arish rao before 2014 he was roaming around in slippers today is worth of 1 lakh crores this is not my allegation this is their own party allegation Rajdeep was asking you so number no, no, no one minute one the minute BJP sir had an opportunity they have completely gone down I remember completely Rayon gone down and minutes. third the BRS party I am challenging I am challenging BRS party will not cross 40 okay they are down to 25 sir there are KCR's are welfare schemes report. Sir, there and are KCR's welfare schemes that he's relying seats. on. So just watch my word. Okay. Market. There are KCR's welfare schemes, Krishna Sagar Rao, welfare that many believe have been have very effective. Elsewhere. Welfare schemes, even in BJP, in Karnataka, what happened? Okay. Mayavat announced seats one year ahead of time. What happened? So it's not going to work by announcing advance that you think they're ahead of the game? Okay. They're wrong. Okay. Final word, Krishna Sagar Rao. Number of seats. How many seats is the BJP looking at? I want a realistic number. You can't have 80, 90 for BJP. What is your realistic number? honest answer see elections are always about the mandate of the people we neither believe in surveys nor believe in uh, you know boasted and you know big expectations before we go into the war we go into the war we go into the election, explain people what we are capable of doing and what we are doing. No, no, but Amit Shah always gives a number. Mr. And Amit Shah always gives a number. What is your mission for for for, uh, for telling yeah. mission 60, mission 50, mission 40? See, Rajdeep, the mission is set by Amit Shah for our party internally to rise to that number. But in any case, what if is you the want number? to know internal number, it is 70 plus. 70 that's plus. That's what we are aiming for. And okay. we want to ensure that there is a change of government okay. and Bharatiya Janata Party comes into the state government. Okay, let me leave it the there. State okay, one, one party has told me they are going to get 95 to 105. One is saying 80, one is saying 70. At the end of the day, there are only 119 seats. Mr. Sridhar Reddy, Rajiv, yes, Rajiv, 10 Rajiv, seconds, Rajiv, 10 I seconds. I remember Madhuji was saying 80, I remember Revant was saying 90, Uttam might be saying 100. Mark my words, BJP will be below 5 and Congress will not cross the double digit. <laughs> it's all the way. <laughs> okay, let's leave it there. Let's leave it there. There, 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 there are only, sir, of sir well, all I know, all I know is that there is a lot of money power at work. There is a lot of money power at work as well. We will see whether resources work, what works in Telangana, but it will be a state closely watched in the months ahead. Mr. Sridhar Reddy, Madhu Yakshagaud and Krishna Sagar Rao, appreciate all three of you joining me here on the news today. Let's turn from there to a story which is going to create waves in the days ahead. Indigo's MD, Rahul Bhatia, summoned by a Lok Sabha panel over alleged protocol violations for MPs. Think about it. Our MPs reportedly are upset over not getting enough privileges, facilities at airlines and airports. A group of parliamentarians had allegedly complained that due courtesy was not being extended to them by airport operators. Now, these are private airlines. So, why should our MPs be complaining? Mr. Bhatia has now been summoned by parliament before August 30th. Paolo Misaha has more. Rahul Bhatia now will represent Indigo when he appears before the Privileges Committee. Now, in September 2021, in fact, the Ministry of Civil Aviation had reiterated certain guidelines in terms of protocols that should be extended to members of parliament, including access to the reserve lounge at airports, free tea, coffee, water, seat preference being given to them, preferably front row seats uh, on airlines, on flights, uh, car parking, which should be given to them on the basis of uh, the sticker that they have on their vehicles as members of parliament. Various such privileges in terms of, of course, priority check-in as they arrive at the airport. A protocol officer should be appointed as well in order to ensure that these courtesies are extended to members of parliament as they reach uh, both international and domestic airports in India. Now, there are many, of course, who are questioning this as to whether this is VVIP and entitled behavior. Why should private airlines be extending these courtesies to our members of uh, parliament? And that has become a topic of conversation and a big raging debate. With camera person Pavan, follow me, Saha, in Delhi for India Today. Why should our MPs demand, demand these facilities from private airlines? Think about it. 
are our MPs not armed citizens like you and me? Let's turn from there to our Get Real India story. The export duty hike on onions has now sparked fury among Maharashtra's farmers and indeed onion farmers across the country. In Nashik, the onion capital of the country's farmers are dumping onions to protest against the government imported imposed restrictions on exports. The center now is moving to placate the angry onion traders by asking agencies to buy at least 5 lakh tons at record high prices. Take a look at tonight's Get Real India story from Nashik. Anger spilling over to the streets of Nashik. Farmers dump onions after the government imposed restrictions on exports. India today travelled to Shimpi Takli, a small village 40 kilometres from Nashik and one of the hubs of onion trade in India. To know firsthand how the export curbs have hit the trade. Central government has imposed 40% tax on the export of onions. Now the farmers of onions are very much unhappy with this decision of the government. They even protested. They have also shut down the biggest market of Asia in Nashik. Traders are furious over the centre's decision to bring down retail prices of onion by imposing a 40% duty on all exports. 80% patch is bad, only 20% patch is bad. The government has taken the decision of the government, it is doing the whole thing. क्योंकि ये जो डिसीजन जो लिया है ये सिर्फ किसान और व्यापारी दोनों को भी मारने वाला है ये डिसीजन है एक्सपोर्ट पे टैक्सेस बढ़ गए मतलब सामने वाला खरीदेगा कम डिमांड कम होगा क्योंकि पैसा ज्यादा लगेगा डिमांड ज्यादा डिमांड कम होगा और सप्लाई उतना ही रहेगा डिमांड कम हो गया सप्लाई बढ़ गया तो ऑब्वियसली रेट गिरने वाले है नाफ्टर प्रोडक्शन अनियंस आर स्टोर्ड एट अ स्टोरेज प्लेस कॉल्ड एस चाली when production happened, entire storage area was filled with good onions, but today the place is only left with wasted and completely destroyed onions. India Today team found farmers making a huge pit to dump the onions. Not just farmers, but traders and commission agents of Nashik, which boasts of the largest wholesale onion market in Asia, are boycotting trade. ये डिसीजन थोड़ा हार्स है और थोड़ा जल्दी है एक्सपोर्ट एज एन एक्सपोर्टर सर प्राइसेस जो इतनी बढ़ गई है 40 परसेंट ड्यूटी के साथ करीब 50 से 60 परसेंट ऑर्डर्स कम हो जाएंगे हमारा एक बड़ा कंप्यूटर पाकिस्तान है और चाइना है और चाइना के पास रेडी अवेलेबल क्रॉप है और पाकिस्तान भी ऑलरेडी चल रहा है बलूचिस्तान उनका जो एरिया है उधर का क्रॉप तो उनके प्राइसेस फोर्टी फोर्टी परसेंट बढ़ चुके हैं और हमारे काफी अच्छे कस्टमर्स जो है मूव हो चुके हैं उनके तरफ Already singed by the political heat of tomatoes selling at 200 rupees a kilo, the center has imposed curbs to check onion prices. But farmers and traders are not taking kindly to it. With Saurabh Bhaktanya in Nashik, Bureau Report, India Today. So first it was tomato, now it's piaz. Let's take a break at that point. When we return, we are joined by a very special guest, the one and only multiple world champion Vishwanathan Anand will join me in a moment as Indian chess is experiencing another great moment. Pragananda and Magnus Carlsen settle for a draw in Game 1 of the World Chess Championship Final. What lies ahead and what does the 18-year-old's rise mean for Indian and World Chess? Back in a moment with that good news story.
from the biggest conflict zones we are at the hostile air base and this is to the biggest international moments a reporter with india's flag on his sleeve and an unrelenting eye on terror defense and national security on the road up the heights in the trenches he brings you stories that must unite us because when it's national interest it's india first monday to friday 10 pm only on india today tv Welcome back to our good news story the first game of the World Chess Cup final in Baku between Indian chess prodigy Ramesh Babu Pragnananda and Magnus Carlsen ended in a draw on Tuesday both players deciding to shake hands after 35 moves the second game of the final will be played on Wednesday this time Pragnananda playing with black pieces a draw even on Wednesday will mean that the world chess winner will be decided on Thursday in the rapid and blitz tie breakers remember this is an 18 year old who is uh, one of the breakthrough moments of indian sport someone who uh, has at the age of 18 gone where no other sports person has ever gone so quite remarkable what pragnananda has achieved in the last week at the world championships only carlson and bobby fisher before him have been younger when they've qualified now for the world candidates championship so that's really the story to look out for uh someone who's really blazed a new trail lots of praise coming his way for what he's achieved even today against magnus carlson more than holding his own against one of the greatest chess players of all time so pragnananda eyeing that historic win at the moment in uh, baku hoping all eyes on him tomorrow could be a big day for indian sport as well as not just for the moon landing but for what pragnananda could achieve uh, vishwanathan anand joins me chess grandmaster five times world champion vishi what does this mean excitement for you that an 18 year old has achieved as much as he has Yes, it's, it's wonderful news. I mean, in uh, one tournament in the FIDE World Cup in Baku, Gukesh crossed my um, world ranking. He's now uh, seventh in the world, and Pratyananda has become the first Indian after me to end up in a World Cup final and to qualify for the candidates next year. And at all of eighteen, as you said, so, which is unbelievable. I mean, when I was eighteen. I had just become a grandmaster, and uh, at eighteen, he is in the candidates. So very, very exciting. To top it off, he has beaten the number two and number three in the world, mm -hmm. and is now facing off against Magnus Carlsen himself. So for chess, this is all the drama you could hope for. You know, the word prodigy, like legend, is overused. You are a legend. Are we seeing the making of a prodigy here? he's a huge talent certainly you know if he's at such a young age he is a prodigy and uh, what he's shown is that he has what it takes to go all the way i mean he's showing all the qualities you would need normally much later in life tenacity uh, ability to keep playing under pressure um just huge competitive skills as well so he's not only about just knowledge he's competing uh, at a very high level and that's what uh, 
people are so excited about simply. What, 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 what is that special quality for all of us observing him? We just read the headlines, him making one headline after the other. He's beaten Carlson in the past also. To achieve that at 18 is special, but is there a particular quality of his f which stands out for you, Vishy? It's a combination of tenacity. He consistently saves difficult positions, which means that it's not enough just to get a good position against him. You have to knock him out. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a very useful quality because the harder it is for your opponents to do it, uh, the more discouraged they become. Mm -hmm. He is himself able to do this against the strongest players. Uh, he did it yesterday against the uh, number two in the world, Karwana. Just survived difficult position after difficult position. He got one good chance, he went uh, in for the kill. Mm -hmm. um, and he's able to play against uh, people like Carlson, who put pressure on uh, you during all phases of the game. And, uh, you know, able to absorb that and, and give it back and keep making good moves and uh, keep his composure, not make erratic decisions. So it's a combination of good nerves, good uh, fitness, um, sensible decision making, a whole bunch of practical skills um, when just, you're playing a chess game. Just give us a sense of how difficult it is to play Carlson because Carlson is, uh, you know, is seen as the modern great now. Uh, and he's going to play tomorrow with White. Does that make it even more difficult for, uh, for, for Pragnan? Or the fact that he's defeated Carlson in the past should give him reason for cheer? Both. So let's get to it. For what is Carlson uh, first? Carlson is very difficult to play because he makes very few errors. He makes errors, but they usually not terrible ones. His consistency is very high. So... He may not always make the best move, but it won't be the worst move either. Mm -hmm. And that kind of uh, means that his opponents get a more limited range of opportunities against him. Uh, what uh, Carlson will be trying to do tomorrow is to put a lot of pressure on the white pieces. Pragnananda didn't have a huge impact today with the white pieces, which is like the serve in tennis, so you're supposed to put a bit of pressure. Mm -hmm. He didn't manage to do that, but that's understandable because he's still exhausted from yesterday's struggle. So I think overall today was a good result, but uh, Pragnananda has to know that tomorrow is going to be a tough day at the office and uh, hopefully he can get himself in the right frame of mind to uh, take that uh, to its successful conclusion. You know, let, let's just look at, uh, in conclusion, at the wider picture. You know, you broke through, broke the glass ceiling, became world champion. Now we have a chess revolution, different parts of the country, but none bigger than Chennai. The, chess capital in a way of the country. What is it that has changed? Is it just the fact that there are role models like you, there are facilities available through chess clubs? Something seems to have changed that is making so many Indian players do so remarkably well at the highest level in this sport. At some degree, in some way you hit on it. Uh, each generation builds on the previous one. So I was the first grandmaster in a state which already had four international masters. Uh, in the same way, now uh, Tamil Nadu has progressed so much, along with the rest of India, by the way. Uh, we have more than 80 grandmasters in the country. And uh, what this meant, uh, this has meant is that a lot of the previous grandmasters uh, have run excellent coaching academies. They're available uh, as trainers. They uh, help you in other ways. And so this generation was able to grow faster. On top of that, there's... Uh, a lot of trends which are going very nicely for chess, internet connectivity, uh, the general popularity of the game, therefore more sponsors, more resources, all these things coming in. So multiple factors, I think maybe the beauty is that they all uh, came together at the right time. And uh, have, uh, this have, particular generation, they're very, very good, they're very talented, and they're all under 20. We have four of the world's best players, and they're all under 20 which is really uh, special because it means that not only will they keep pushing each other now, they're going to keep pushing each other for the next 10 years down the line. We really have a golden generation, a generation wow. uh, which I can say for the next 10 years, uh, we every Indian chess fan will have somebody to follow in some tournament or the other. And that's kind of the outlook we're looking at. Now, golden generation is great to hear from you very quickly. Have you ever advised Pragnan? Uh, uh, Pragnan, have you ever told him what to do, what, how to face up to this pressure? Have you and he been chatting away? We have had many discussions, however, not much during this tournament. 
uh, I assume that the player has too much on his head already, and uh, I haven't uh, I haven't wanted to disturb anything. But we have spoken uh, at length about these topics, um, even interchanged ideas. Uh, many of them have their ear to the ground because they are actually competing very hard. I try to share my experiences, and uh, yes, we have interacted a lot. Also. Um, we keep in touch constantly through the West Prajananda the Chess Academy, Vaka, and uh, he's Pragnananda, Gukesh are both uh, mentees there. So we get to interact quite a bit. Well, it's wonderful, you know, to have someone like you pass the bait on in a way to the next generation. We hope that Pragnananda tomorrow does the country proud. Either way, what he's achieved is quite remarkable, as you have, Vishwanathan Anand. This is the golden generation of chess. And I hope may that long continue. Thank you very much for joining us. Shatranj Ke Khiladi. This was in many ways the land of Shatranj. This is also the land of science. Because not only are we going to cheer for Pra Pragnananda tomorrow, we're also cheering all the way for Team Isro and Chandrayaan 3. At IndiaToday.in Chandrayaan, you can send all your messages to our scientists through the day tomorrow. All our thoughts tomorrow with our lunar mission as it hopes to reach uh, where no one else has before, at least from this country. And we'll become the fourth country in the world and the first to reach the South Pole of the Moon. Thanks for watching. Stay well, stay safe. Good night. Shubhratri. Jai Hind. Namaskar. should be your alternatives to white refined sugar which clearly is something that you must avoid let's talk about what you can use instead of this white sugar number one organic brown sugar organic then all the very better because this is extremely healthy now what it does essentially is that this is processed but it is made in the most natural way to retain most of sugarcane's nutrition and that's the reason why this should be an alternative coconut or palm sugar again extremely healthy sources of uh, sugar which are alternatives as well extracted from the flower buds of the coconut palm tree the sugar has a mild caramel taste and can be used in a number of ways in your delicacies also for daily consumption date sugar extremely nutritious natural sweetener date sugar can be a great addition to your diet this also is a good alternative jaggery or good as we know it has got a world of benefits in terms of uh, what it does to your body essentially a lot of people have spoken about the fact that during pollution you should be consuming a lot of good it's a great alternative to sugar also the fact that it is rich in iron is really an added benefit and added advantage raw or unprocessed honey this too is a great alternative you can use it in various forms like you use white refined sugar it tastes extremely good as well forecast now. Delhi, maximum 40 and minimum 27 degrees. Mumbai, maximum 29 and minimum 26 degrees. Kolkata, maximum 32 and minimum 26 degrees. Bangalore, maximum 27 and minimum 25 degrees. Chennai, maximum 32 and minimum 28 degrees. 
Hyderabad, maximum 30 and minimum 23 degrees. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjtag.com. In politics, everyone has an opinion. But I have the data. Whose stock is rising? Whose graph is falling? Track India's political stock exchange. Unmatched, unmissable data analytics. The only show on News TV where numbers do the talking. India's most credible poll tracker. The political stock exchange. With Rahul Kamal, only on India Today. Good evening viewers, let's take a look at the weather report across the major cities this evening. Thiruvananthapuram is at 31 degrees Celsius with an AQI of 62. Mumbai is at 29 degrees Celsius with an AQI of 47. Panji is at 29 degrees Celsius with an AQI of 41. Ahmedabad is at 31 degrees Celsius with an AQI of 48. Bhopal is at 29 degrees Celsius with an AQI of 32. Jaipur is at 35 degrees Celsius with an AQI of 93. Delhi is at 35 degrees Celsius with an AQI of 122. Srinagar is at 32 degrees Celsius with AQI being 107. Lucknow is at 29 degrees Celsius with an AQI of 88. Patna is at 32 degrees Celsius with an AQI of 106. Kolkata is at 32 degrees with an AQI of 53. Hyderabad is at 31 degrees Celsius with an AQI of 52. Bangalore is at 32 degrees Celsius with an AQI of 38. Chennai is at 32 degrees Celsius with an AQI of 102. This is all we have for you in this segment. Hope wherever you are, you find favorable weather around you. Keep watching India today for all the weather updates with me AI Sana all through the day. Co-powered by the new Kia Seltos, the badass reborn. Co-powered by policybazaar.com, her family hogi in short. It's the final countdown. 20 hours to go for touchdown. India on the verge of creating history. First country to land on the South Pole of the Moon. A billion prayers, one mission. India on the moon. That's our top focus on India first. India is all set to script history. So imagine from a speed of 6,000 kilometers per hour at one time. The aim is to deboost and hover before a gentle touchdown. That's the aim. A soft landing on the south pole of the moon. It's been attempted before, never successfully done. The area has been mapped. It's on the grid of the scientists. Lessons have been learned from Chandrayaan 2. And multiple redundancies have been built into the system to ensure India becomes the first country in the world to achieve this soft landing on the South Pole of the Moon. But what does this mean and what will it entail? I'm Gaurav Savant. Over the course of the next half hour, we get you the final countdown. But first as always, the headlines. Less than 20 hours to go now for Chandrayaan 3's Moon Touchdown. ISRO ready with plan B in case conditions are unfavorable. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to watch the landing live virtually in South Africa.
Delhi's alleged rapist Babu and wife's attempt to evade arrest. Foiled CCTV images show the bureaucrat at a church days after the FIR was filed against him. Delhi Women's Panel Chief seeks a meeting with the Union Home Minister Amit Shah. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is in South Africa for the BRICS summit at Johannesburg. Big suspense over a bilateral with the Chinese President Xi Jinping. Shocking Bihar VVIP culture on display. An ambulance blocked for Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar's convoy despite the patient's family crying. A Bihar police officer also seen holding an umbrella for RJD Supremo Lalu Prasad Yadav. Eighteen charred bodies found. Wildfire continues to spread across Greece. The bodies were recovered from an area in the northeast of Greece by firefighters struggling hard to control the blaze. With bated breath, a billion strong nation is waiting for the final touchdown of Chandrayaan 3. The countdown has begun for Vikram Lander to softly touch down and land on the south pole of the moon. And once moon dust settles, the Pragyan rover will roll out. And with that, India's national emblem, the Ashok symbol, the Ashok Chin, and of course, the symbol of the Indian Space Research Organization will forever be imprinted on Moon. ISRO is confident. So far, all systems are working. There are multiple redundancies that have been built in. Every situation has been wargamed. And of course, also the prayers of a billion strong nation. India Today's Akshita Nanda Gopal brings you our top story. India's moon mission is hours away from a historic climax. Chandrayaan's Vikram lander is approaching the moon rendezvous. Saying hello to Chandrama, snapping breathtaking images from close vicinity, showing moon in all its glory. With details of the unexplored far site, complete with billionaire-old craters. Indian Space Agency asserted that the mission is fully on track. The system is undergoing regular checks to ensure a smooth touchdown. It is almost similar to what we uh, designed or developed for Chandrayaan 2, except for instead of Orbiter now, because Orbiter is anyway working fine right. and it is still useful and it is giving a lot of in important data which will be utilized for Chandrayaan 3 landing also. Mm -hmm. So we decided that uh, we, we Orbiter will be replaced by a propulsion module. Uh, which, which duty is to take it to the orbit of moon surface. ISRO is not taking any chances, especially after crash of the Russian moon mission. Keeping another landing site ready for Sunday touchdown if parameters aren't ideal on Wednesday. Former ISRO chief K. Sivan broke down the final manoeuvres moments before the planned touchdown. First of all, uh, Luna uh, mission failure and uh, this one they are not related. Luna actually that is have its own system, its own uh, the sensor, thrusters and it may have its own characteristics. But uh, we have our own system, our own thruster, our own sensors which it, it has been functioning very nicely and without any problem and uh, till now we are uh, uh, achieved what we want in a perfect way and I am sure that this will repeat on 23rd also so we will get a good uh, uh, landing and uh, we are not getting uh, uh, disturbed by the Luna 25 failure we are, they are not related, they are not a similar system, they are different system Okay. So we are confident that we are uh, will be able to achieve without any problem. A billion cheers, prayers, and wishes 
are meanwhile pouring in as India roots for Chandrayaan 3. एक बहुत बड़ा इतिहास भारत के सभी विशेषज्ञों ने हमारे वैज्ञानिकों ने रचा है और प्रधानमंत्री जी के नेतृत्व में भारत नई ऊंचाइयां तो छू ही रहा था भारत का तिरंगा केवल देश के अंदर नहीं लेकिन विश्व पटल पर पर अब हमारी यही कोशिश है कि वो तिरंगा चांद पे भी Special pujas are being held in temples and namaz is being offered in mosques, all for Chandrayaan's success. The lander is expected to touch down on Moon's South Polar region at 6.04 p.m. on Wednesday. We wish India a grand success in conquering the Moon. With Akshita Nandagopal in Bengaluru and Milan Sharma in Ahmedabad, Bureau Report, India Today. And joining me on India First is Raj Chingappa, Group Editorial Director, Publishing of the India Today Group. Raj, you were there at ISRO in 2019. Now, from Chandrayaan to mission, there are important lessons learned, multiple redundancies that have been built into the system. And give us a detail of the scenarios that have been war game. Uh, is ISRO absolutely confident India is set to create history? Absolutely, Gaurav. I was speaking to Dr. Somnath, the chairman of ISRO, and he was explaining what were the lessons they learned from the failure of Chandrayaan 2, and what they have done is built on that. I mean, there were three or four major issues that happened in Chandrayaan 2, which is the propulsion system. It moved too fast when it was supposed to slow down at a particular point. That created its anomaly in terms of the guidance system. That spun the Chandrayaan. If you all, I was there while watching yes. the TV. Uh, you know, from the mission control, you saw Chandrayaan spin, and then we lost contact. What it did was the control system failed, and it crashed. So what uh, they have done this time is built in, in each of these critical systems, when it's propulsion, the speed, mind you, Gaurav, and you, you, you cover armed forces, uh, is that it's traveling at 6,000 kilometers per hour. That's five times the speed of sound. Uh, faster than many of our Sukhois and everything else that's traveling. Uh, a, civil, a civilian jet goes at about 1,000 uh, kilometers per hour max. So you're seeing six times the speed, you have to cut it and bring it down to zero so that when it lands, it touches down softly, almost like you're walking on the moon's surface. That's what it needs to do with the lander. So one is in terms of the propulsion and the velocity that is need to be cut down, you will need these thrusters that begin to, re, uh, to in some sense, retard the speed. There they have done a lot of the, uh, you know, uh, they've made sure that they've got excess fuel, plus they've ensured that yes. if one fails, the other could pick it up and do the balance. The same thing if you take a look at the guidance system. Earlier there was a software error, which meant that the parameters that they had calculated in the algorithm, the moment this went too fast, this turned out, they have now broadened that considerably. And the third aspect of it is, in the guidance, uh, the final control and landing, what they have done is that last time they could only land in a patch of, say, like a football field. That was the size that was there. So it was very pinpointed accuracy that they had to do. This time it's much larger. It's like four times larger the size, which means that it gives them the leeway. And very cleverly, Gaurav, let me tell you, and that's what gives me the confidence, is that uh, because they had Ch Chandrayaan 2 at the orbiter working over there, they've mapped that entire terrain. So they know precisely where they want to land, one. And secondly, because they don't need another orbiter, they've put in more fuel into this. There's almost, the weight of this is almost 200, uh, I think, kgs that they were talking about, which is heavier, which means that they gives them more flexibility. If there's an error, fuel is critical. It's just like if you're traveling from one point to the other, if your car does not have the fuel, it runs out. This was the problem they had when they did with Chandrayaan 2. So this time they made sure they have enough fuel, enough redundancy, and that's why I think tomorrow we're going to celebrate. And then when Chandra, when Vikram Lander comes in to land, it'll actually hover uh, li like a helicopter for some time if need be. But sir, why is this so important, not just for India, but for entire humankind? From, from that soft landing, the next 14 days, 14 Earth days and one lunar day, why are they so crucial? Good question. I mean, firstly, 
let's look at it from the Indian point of view. We are great at building satellites. We have demonstrated that right through for the last 50, 60 years, right? We have reached a competence that's cutting edge. We are great at building launchers. We now have the heaviest launcher, which actually pushed, uh, uh, you know, the initial phase of Chandrayaan into the, uh, beyond the Earth's orbit and uh, on the way to the, to the moon. So we have built competencies in launch vehicles as well as satellites. But when it comes to space exploration, we have done Chandrayaan uh, 1, where we successfully orbited the moon, had an impactor. We have done Mangalyaan, a, moon, a Mars mission, as well as now we're looking at the sun. Very, very important for scientists to demonstrate what is the purpose of this mission. There's three purposes. One is to ensure that the lander lands on the surface. It didn't do that last time. Two, that the rover moves, you know, comes out from, its, uh, <laughs> from the lander and moves. And three, of course, is the scientific experiments. Each of these three have not been done. That's cutting edge science for, uh, for Indian space scientists and for India. Now, if you take a look at the importance that is there, is we have seen a remarkable return to the moon. Artemis project, which was started in 2017 by NASA, is now planning to put man back or humans back on the moon by uh, 2025. That's two years from now, after a gap of 1972. So you can imagine four or five decades have gone and they want it back. Why? Because the moon can be a major staging ground for uh, ex space exploration. You get experience. Also, let's look at why we're landing at the South Pole, for instance. There, the, we feel there's a lot of water, ice and molecules. Yes. Uh, and what will happen is that we can then colonize the moon in some senses and use it as a gateway to explore space. Raj, for joining me here on India First, many thanks. Moon could well be the staging camp as far as Earth is concerned for Mission Mars, the tactical headquarters for any future operations into space. Of course, attempts have been made to land on the south pole of the moon even earlier and not just by India. In fact, Russia's Luna 25 mission failed just over the weekend. It's a huge blow to Russia's moon program, a mission moon. But the way Vikram lander has been built in with multiple cameras, lasers, radars, imagers, scanning the moon's surface when it comes into land, it will virtually hover like a helicopter, finding just the right place to land and ensure that there are no deep craters or boulders and then land so that the Pragyan rover can then roll out, carrying out the tests for the next 14 days. Very crucial for the study of the evolution of a system. Three, two, one. We have ignition. The moon is just 25 kilometers below India's Chandrayaan-3. As a new chapter begins in India's moon tryst, a billion people are praying for its successful landing. The Vikram lander is aiming to land on the lunar south pole, which is a difficult feat. So what makes the soft landing near the lunar south pole incredibly difficult? The south pole of the moon's rugged terrain lies in the shade of perpetual darkness and plummeting temperatures. This is where researchers had previously discovered the presence of frozen water. Chandrayaan 3's successful landing will expand knowledge of frozen water on the moon, potentially one of the moon's most valuable resources. Scientists are interested in pockets of ancient water ice because they could provide a record of lunar volcanoes, materials that comets and asteroids delivered to Earth, and the origins of oceans. If water ice exists in sufficient quantities, it could be a source of drinking water for moon exploration and could help cool equipments. It could also be broken down to produce hydrogen for fuel and oxygen to breathe, supporting missions to Mars or lunar mining. Attempted landings on the moon have failed before. 
Russia's Luna 25 craft had been scheduled to land on the South Pole this week, but spun out of control on approach and crashed on Sunday. The South Pole, far from the equatorial region targeted by previous missions, including the crude Apollo landings, is full of craters and deep trenches. Chandrayaan-3 is proposed to land in the Plato between two craters, Manzanus and Bogoslowski, and a third, Sympelius. Additionally, an alternate landing site has also been proposed. At the mountainous South Pole, the terrain is difficult and dangerous with major craters. Minimal sunlight and temperatures below minus 300 degree Fahrenheit. If all goes according to plan, Chandrayaan-3 is poised to achieve a historic milestone as the world's first lunar mission to execute a soft landing near the moon's South Pole. Bureau Report, India Today. And as we move forward, let's take a look at India's space journey. From an imported rocket in 1963 to the made in India Chandrayaan-3, incidentally a cost less than that Hollywood film Interstellar. India's space mission has actually come a long way. Of course, anticipation builds around Chandrayaan's moonshot. Today, even the sky is not the limit for India. India's pride soars high. Astronaut Rakesh Sharma becomes the first Indian to explore the celestial realm in a joint space mission with what was then Soviet Union. But the country achieved its first astronomical feat much before in 1963. Naika Pache, a two-stage sounding rocket imported from the United States, blasted off from a fishing village near Tiruvananthapuram in Kerala. Over the last six decades, India's space program has evolved enormously. From launch vehicles for satellites, insats for telecom, broadcasting, meteorology, remote sensing for satellite imagery, to research and development in space. From Aryabhat, a satellite designed and fabricated indigenously and launched from a Soviet rocket in 1975, to now on course to reach the moon, and become the first country to explore its South Pole. Lift off normal. Here we have a majestic lift off of LBM 3 M4 rocket carrying India's prestigious Chandrayaan 3 spacecraft. Because that's a place where we can get uh, sufficiently enough solar heat and uh, light for a power generation. If you go further, there is a possibility that you will not get the full daytime use utility. Fifteen years ago, India's first moon mission performed a detailed search of evidence of water and chemical composition of certain lunar rocks. The sky is the limit for the country's space ambitions. India's first space-based mission to study the sun. Aditya L1 nearing its launch date by the end of August or early September. Currently, payloads are getting integrated with the satellite and uh, it will go through a series of testing including thermovac, vibration, so many things. And uh, after that, we will we'll have the launch. The, it goes in a PSLV, so that will send a commercial launch. So after that, we are already starting another building uh, next to PSLV uh, and we are targeting by August end that uh, Aditya can go. ISRO working on the Gaganyaan mission, India's first manned space flight program blazing its way through the Earth's final frontier. India establishes itself as a space power and a master of space engineering. Bureau Report, India Today. And not just India, not just a billion strong people, it's actually the world that's watching India. My colleague Akshita Nandagopal spoke exclusively to a former NASA astronaut and the commander uh, of the International Space Station, Chris Hatfield, 
own India's Chandrayaan 3 mission and what the world is looking at. Let's listen in to some excerpts. And it's my absolute pleasure to be joined here on India Today by Chris Hadfield, former commander of the International Space Station and author of the Apollo murders. Just to give you a brief sense of all that Chris has achieved, he's flown in three missions, built two space stations, performed two spacewalks, and was the first Canadian to have walked in space. So you'd understand why I'm particularly excited about his new book, The Defector, that is, in fact, releasing on October 10th that's coming out. Chris, good morning. Congratulations. Congratulations on your new book and thank you very much for joining us here on India Today. I've been seeing uh, you know, from your social media interactions that you've been tracking the Chandrayaan-3 moon mission very, very closely. Just so you know, for our viewers to understand from an expert perspective, from your perspective, how hard really is a soft landing on the moon? Well, thank you and good evening. Uh, yeah, I heard someone say a billion cheers for Vikram and uh, add my voice as one of those billion cheers. It's, it's immensely exciting. But as you say, it's extremely hard. Uh, you know, it's, it's 400,000 kilometers away and we're landing way down to the south, 70 degrees south. It's as if you were landing on the edge of Antarctica and you're trying to do it where, where the final last few meters or few feet of touchdown, you're, you're just counting on the automatic systems. And so there can always be, you know, a boulder in the way or, or a, an uneven spot on the ground, even though they've chosen a plateau. And I know that the Russians had no success earlier this week. Remember, they've launched 27 missions to the moon and they only landed seven times and the last one was a failure so it's still exquisitely difficult but with the tremendous uh, experience gained in chandrayaan one which helped discover water on the moon in chandrayaan two which has been mapping the moon ever since and now with uh, with sort of the the granddaughter of all of those of Chandrayaan-3, I'm really optimistic and, and excited about the landing that's going to be happening just slightly under 24 hours from now. Yeah, I loved how you referred to Chandrayaan-3 as the granddaughter of these missions. It's so aptly put. I'm going to borrow that phrase also in the next 24 hours. You referred to Luna 25, and the reason I talk about it right now, Chris, is look, Russia has attempted this, as you said, 27 times. They've got it right seven times. Now, in the last 50 years or so, we've seen several such soft landings occur. It's 2023, and yet we haven't really been able to master it. Why is that? What makes it so unpredictable or so hard so many years on? Uh, well, part of it is uh, the nature of the moon itself. Um, if you were going around the moon, the amount of gravity that you feel in different parts of the orbit changes. The moon is a lot more lumpy than the Earth is. It's got big, dense sections. And so that makes orbital prediction more difficult. It's hard to know exactly where you are. There's no GPS. So where exactly around the moon are you? How do you even figure that out? And even though we've taken lots of images from the orbiting vehicles of the plateau that Chandrayaan-3 and Victram are going to land on, you still don't know the fine details. You know, imagine if, if you were trying to land a helicopter somewhere in India and you looked and looked and looked, but then just when you got close to the surface, you had to sort of close your eyes and then just descend the last 50 meters with your eyes closed. It's sort of that level of, of difficulty. And, and that's why the engineers at ISRO have been working so hard since Chandrayaan 2 to improve all of the systems, to make the landing gear wider and more robust, to try and give extra layers of, uh, of backup. And it is possible to land on the moon. Three other nations have done it. And I think India is really poised right now to be the fourth nation in history to land on the moon. The scientific impact of that and the inspirational impact of that for young Indians right across the country. But, but it all comes down to, uh, to that last descent and touchdown coming up uh, within a day now. Well, three nations have done it, but India will be the first to do it on the South Pole 
of the moon and we'll be tracking that story very very closely that is all i have for you on india first this evening many thanks for watching up next abha bakaya with business today stay with us Three circles the moon. India's billion breaths are held. Our spacecraft is in final descent, and every Indian heart beats for it as India's historic moon landing nears for our scientists and their moon craft. Your love, your prayers, your wishes matter. Come on, India, cheer for Chandrayaan. Hello and welcome here with us here in Business Today. I'm Abha Bakaya. Here are the day's top stories. India's giant leap towards Atmanirbhar Tar in car safety ratings. Nitin Gadkari inaugurates Bharat NCAP program. Enthusiastic response by the industry. 30 requests for testing already received. Government rushes to placate angry onion traders in Maharashtra. Agencies to buy 5 lakh tons at record high prices will also sell onions across India at 25 rupees a kilo to bring down eye watering prices. Finance Ministry report says inflation to remain high in the coming months blames it on global uncertainties and domestic disruptions. New crop arrivals and imports to ease price pressures. The new direct tax code will have no income tax exemptions, announces the chairman of the Prime Minister Economic Advisory Council, says exemptions only increase costs, calls for higher taxes to develop infrastructure. Sensex and Nifty end flat, even as small and mid-cap stocks surge in trade today. PSU Metal and IT shares shine. Mixed global queues keep investors guessing. Geo Financial shares hit lower circuit for second consecutive day since its listing loses $2 billion in valuation in two days. Exchanges postpone its exclusion from indices for three days. India has taken a giant leap towards Atmanirbharta in car safety ratings. The Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways today launched the new Bharat Car Assessment Program or the Bharat NCAP to evaluate safety standards of passenger vehicles. According to the minister, requests to test and certify more than 30 models from several automakers have already been received. Cars being 
deliberately smashed against walls. Wired mannequins in them sending real-time data on damages and injuries. Getting a 5-star rating in these tests can break or make a car model. Companies like Tata, Mahindra, Maruti had sent to their models overseas for these tests, incurring huge expenses. From the 1st October, these tests will be conducted right here in India. Under the Bharat NCAP program, passenger vehicles that can accommodate up to 8 passengers and weigh up to 3.5 tonne will be tested. These vehicles will be tested through various methods that are in sync with global NCAP and Euro NCAP crash testing protocols and will be assigned a safety rating ranging between 0 and 5 stars. The comprehensive criteria for the star ratings include facets such as pedestrian friendly design, structural robustness, provision of active and passive safety technologies as well as safety provisions for both adult and child occupants. It is really, I cannot explain it in the world. And this is the time that we have the highest priority for this, how we can save the life of the people. And road safety is the most important thing for that. But it is not only that oil industry is responsible. Somewhere road engineering is a big problem. Our total process of making a detailed project report is very, very, it's totally wrong methodology and we select the agency, they create a lot of problems, there are a lot of complications and because of that also we are facing the problem. The government has already received requests to test and certify more than 30 models from several automakers under the assessment program. The program is voluntary and tests the base variant of a given model. Already more than 30 applications have been received because this whole exercise was done in consultation with the industry and therefore industry was very positive about it. And already on today's day, day of launch, 30 ap applications for testing have been received. According to the Road Transport Ministry, the program's objective is to furnish car consumers with a tool for making comparative evaluations of the crash safety attributes of motor vehicles available in the market. There are however concerns that the crash test could lead to prices hikes by manufacturers. As and when uh, you know the new uh, additional features are added, it, it comes at a cost. So definitely that will uh, increase the cost. But as I said, for us, we already have the safety pack in place. So you know, frankly, for us it won't. But uh, players who do not have these features and they have to add it afresh, uh, definitely they will increase the prices. This, of course, this will encourage manufacturers to do more towards safety uh, beyond what is required by regulation and uh, go for higher stars, so that's a positive step. And since the government is involved, it gives some authenticity and objectivity. That's Importantly, the Bharat NCAP test will provide a big boost to exports from India. The tough NCAP rules mean that Indian results will be accepted across more countries. The government also expects foreign car manufacturers to start testing their cars in India. With Chetan Bhutani, Bureau Report, Business Today Television. Apple is looking at expanding its manufacturing operations in India. Senior government sources have told Business Today TV that top representatives from Apple India recently held a detailed meeting with officials from the Finance Ministry to discuss their plans for expanding iPhone manufacturing. According to sources, discussions centered around the future of smartphone manufacturing within India and how India's policies could be aligned to support this initiative. Karishma Sudhani has more on this for us. Karishma? Well, we do have our sources in the Ministry of Finance confirming us that uh, Apple India team had a detailed discussion with officials of uh, the Finance Ministry in India. In fact, uh, we've been told that discussions were uh, held on how India emerges as to be one of the key investment countries when it comes to the smartphone industry. In fact, uh, the tech giant also shared with India that uh, they do see value creation in the coming years uh, 
in in the country and they do want india to be one of the emerging countries besides vietnam and cambodia as uh, the spot of investment and manufacturing of iphones this also kind of drifts away china from the whole plan uh, of um, uh, leading and holding a monopoly in the smartphone manufacturing uh, market we are also told that um, government uh, is in a positive uh, uh, cooperation with uh, the uh, with the whole concept of smartphone manufacturing in india and if required may consider certain tax incentives to companies Thanks, Karishma. In one of the surest signs of the direction that the government is heading in, Bibek Debroy has called for removal of tax exemptions. Debroy, the chairperson of the Economic Advisory Council to the Prime Minister, today called for tax reforms and suggested that the provision of exemptions and direct taxes should be eliminated. Speaking at an event in Kolkata, he said exemptions lead to higher costs of compliance for the taxpayer. He also highlighted that if Indians aspire for growth and want world-class infrastructure, they should be ready to pay higher taxes. The government has been moving to slowly weeding out tax exemptions with the new income tax regime offering exemption-less higher tax slabs. The eventual direct tax code, in my view, will involve a complete elimination of all exemptions. Any exemption only makes life more complicated. Any exemption only increases compliance costs. Any exemption only leads to litigation. Any exemption only enriches chartered accountants and lawyers. <laughs> so whether we like it or not, either we must be prepared to pay more as taxes, or our expectations cannot be that we will get airports like in the West, or railway stations like in China or water. Markets were flat today, unchanged from their previous close. Bulls did attempt to take charge, but fag and selling in heavyweights uh, erased the day's gains. All eyes on global queues to direct the markets in the near term. The Sensex and Nifty both are pretty much unchanged for the session. Top gainers today are Dani Enterprise, HFC Life, ITC, NTPC and Hero Motor Corp. We'll bring those up for you in just a second. So those are some of the names that uh, stood out. While on the loser's end, we had Geo Financial Services. Once again, BPCL, Sipla, Aisha Motors and Bajaj Finsurf. New age technology stocks were in demand today with several brokerage reports raising estimates for their stock prices. Some of the stocks like Nika, Paytm and Zomato were among big gainers today with the Nifty Digital Index ending up 0.67%. Second to only the PSU indices. My colleague Sakshi Batra spoke to market analyst Kranti Bhattini to gauge the market mood for some of these counters. For any investor looking uh, at the new age tech basket, what would you really recommend? Uh, how should one really approach? Is this the right time, first of all, to jump into some of them, start building up uh, their positions, nibbling into some of them because now we are seeing profitability come in and fundamentals improving for some of them. Is this the right time? Absolutely, Sakshi. I believe this is the right time for the new age companies. Investors want to take their positions because as you rightly mentioned, one thing is, Fundamentals are improving, profitability is coming back, and also valuations are not stretched as it were uh, they were at the time of listing. So uh, it is uh, it, uh, it is a very good price range uh, for uh, any investor who want to take their position, but they can take uh, in a staggered manner. There is no hurry to buy and jump at this point of time. Probably they can buy at dips uh, in their portfolio, but absolutely it's the right time to take start taking the position in these new age companies. Okay, so if I were to ask you, Mr. Patini, that out of all of these names that we've discussed, Paytm, Policy Bazaar, uh, Zomato, Car Trade Technologies, um, and also Delivery and CE Info Systems, maybe Nika also, if I have to discuss with you, which are the best place stocks to really keep their focus on investors? Where should they keep their focus on now? The first priority goes to Sakshi, uh, definitely to uh, 197, the Paytm, uh, is the favorite pick at this point of time. The remaining also uh, at an appropriate point of time one need to take the decision as for the price movements and uh, of the earning visibility improves for these stocks. 
Mm, okay, and uh, you know some of them like we already have seen a 50% surge coming in. Where do you see fair value still, uh, you know, on the stock coming in? And where do you believe that, you know, the stocks are now poised to perhaps uh, reach their issue prices once again? Uh, that's a very interesting question, Sakshi. Okay. One thing is uh, the stock have uh, completely uh, taken a U-turn and they formed a base and it's a process and they're right now inching towards uh, uh, in a higher trend. One good thing that happened in these stocks is they are in a, the trend for the most of these companies are in an uptrend. The, the trend has emerged in a positive territory. So always uh, investors need to keep their trend uh, as their friend. We take a break. When we come back, we'll bring you an expert who'll explain the new tax rules on life insurance policies and what they mean. Where did our moon come from? <laughs> But actually, there have been several theories over many decades. Earlier versions of lunar formation theories included capture, where the moon would have been a strayed planetoid. Another version was fission, where the Earth was spinning so fast that it would have warped out of the Earth and then formed its own body. This led to our current theory, the giant impactor theory. So this collision was during the late stages of planetary formation throughout our entire solar system, when planets were still very new and very much forming. So this happened when Earth was just an embryo, a baby planet. And this was actually in a crash course collision with Theia which is a Mars-sized planetoid. And this collision ripped apart early Earth's crust. And that crust then coalesced, it snowballed into a whole separate entity, which we now call the moon. So where did our moon come from? Well, currently our understanding is that the Earth had collided with a Mars-sized object named Theia. But once we send future astronauts to the lunar surface again, who knows, we may actually have a whole new theory in the coming decades. Welcome back. The central government has stepped up efforts to soothe the rising tempers of onion traders in Maharashtra. Central purchasing agency have been ordered to procure 5 lakh ton onions at very attractive prices. What's more, the government has hinted that it may waive the 40% export duty on shipments which have already reached ports. <laughs> Anger spilling over to the streets of Nashik. Traders from Lasalgaon and Ahmednagar, Onion Mandi stage demonstrations and chakka jams. <laughs> Protesting the government's decision to hit onion exports with a 40% duty. Mandis, usually overflowing with onions, were deserted this morning. With traders and commission agents of Nashik, which boosts the largest wholesale onion market in Asia, boycotting trade from Monday. Japari, local market me, you jo pya jaye, ye iske bhav gir jayenge aur seed kari ka bada nuksan ho jayega. Pehle hi seed kari ne jab season me kanda shuruat me 300 rupees, 400 rupees quintal bechna pada, aaj bari muskil se bhav thode sudar rahe the, lekin Kendra Sarkar ne. The government has reacted quickly to the flare-up, announcing that central procurement agencies like NCCF and NAFED will buy 2 lakh tons of onions over and above the 3 lakh tons bought in the past couple of days from the Nashik area. 
The procurement will be done at record prices of 2,410 rupees per 100 kilos. The agencies will also sell onions across the country at subsidized rates of 25 rupees a kilo. NCCF or NAFED, देश के अलग-अलग इलाकों में 25 रुपए पर सब्सिडाइज्ड रेट पर केंद्र सरकार वो सब्सिडी उपलब्ध कराएगी सब्सिडाइज्ड रेट पर प्याज उद्भोक्ताओं के लिए सामान्य आदमियों के लिए सामान्य लोगों के लिए उपलब्ध कराएगी What's more, in an effort to cool tempers, the government seems willing to waive the newly imposed 40% export duty on onions, which have already reached ports. कुछ सामान पोर्ट के अंदर शिपमेंट के लिए एक्सपोर्ट के लिए गया है, उसकी जानकारी JNPT वगैरह से हम ले रहे हैं। अगर वो पोर्ट के अंदर जाके शिपिंग बिल फाइल हो गया है। फोर्टी परसेंट ड्यूटी लगने के पहले तो उसपे उचित निर्णय डीजीएफटी लेंगे। The center seems to have staved off a crisis, both economic and political for now. Onions have, after all, been known to topple governments in the country. However, the real impact of the record procurement prices for five lakh tons of onions could be felt sooner than later. Bureau Report, Business Today, Television. The Income Tax Department has issued a new circular clarifying rules on the taxability of non-unit linked life insurance policies. This is following the budget announcement that the maturity proceeds of traditional policies have an aggregate premium exceeding 5 lakh rupees will become taxable. Tina Jain Koshal, editor Money Today, spoke to Sudhin Sabne's partner Nangya Anderson about what it means for taxpayers. Welcome, Mr. Sudhin. Please tell us what are these new rules about. Sure, thank you. Glad to be here. So, uh, Tina, uh, basically, prior to the budget 2023, uh, the payouts what were made on life insurance policies uh, were generally tax free. So there was an exemption specifically what was what was uh, there with respect to a payout of a life insurance policy. There were certain conditions attached, but generally they were uh, tax free if those conditions were met. Now uh, they have there, there has been an amendment wherein you know they have introduced a key rule. So the rule is basically if the premium uh, what is paid on the policies what are taken after first of April 2023. As a single policy or as an aggregate of the policies, what what are being taken post first of April 2023 exceeds five five lakhs in a financial year, then the maturity payouts for such policies will now be taxed. This is the key change. What is what has taken place now? This will be taxed as income from other sources to the extent um, the maturity proceeds exceed the premium payouts, uh, the the premium what has been paid. Now thing is. Uh, there were a lot of ambiguities uh, in in the meanwhile since since this change had had come in because um, there were a lot of clarification required as to for example what happens to my existing policies what were taken before uh, post of april 2023 what happens for for example um, to the to the threshold of 5 lakh how is that to be calculated for example you know there's a gst element as as well but what goes in the premium whether that is to be included in the calculation of five when it comes to a term policy is that also to be included in this calculation of five lakhs what happens in case i have got multiple policies so there were a lot uh, a lot of ambiguities what are now sort of addressed by way of this circle. so this circular is is, is uh, you know something which is a guideline a lot of examples have been provided uh, which generally clarifies on the taxability uh, of this of the payouts what will be received with respect to such policies if if i can take one example supposedly i have three policies of rupees two like each on 1st mm -hmm. april 2023 so will mm -hmm. all three be exempted or the third one particularly where i'm actually crossing this limit of five lakh will be taxable absolutely so uh, in in this case to the extent of the third policy wherein it exceeds the limit of 5 lakhs, only that policy will be taxable. The first two can will still remain uh, tax exempt when it comes to the maturity proceeds. Okay. So, can I also decide which policy to be tax exempted to maximize my tax benefit? Is this provision available? 
Yes, so this has also been clarified in the circular. So, uh, what what the circular provides is is that where, uh, for for instance, uh, the policies are being taken uh, in case of multiple policies, of course, um, wherein you know you do have uh, you do have uh, payouts which will uh, exceed um, uh, the the premium of which will exceed five lakh rupees. You can choose to the best possible extent whatever is beneficial for you. What will become taxable and what will become exempt? So that is in the hands of the uh, of the policyholder or basically of the taxpayer. Diamonds may be forever, but that does not mean the industry's success is guaranteed as well. India's largest diamond hub, Surat, is facing the heat of the Russia-Ukraine war. With the primary source of raw materials choked off, workers in Surat are losing jobs, and some have even committed suicide, reportedly due to financial hardship. We bring you this report on the crisis. Ninety percent of all diamonds sold globally are processed in Surat. Six thousand units in Surat cut and polish rough diamonds sourced from around the world. More than a million craftsmen and other workers are employed by Surat Diamond Industry. One point six trillion rupees—that is what Surat generates as revenue every year. But the sparkle at India's diamond hub has a dark side as well. As many as nine workers have committed suicide in the past few weeks. More than 20,000 workers have lost their jobs as Surat grapples with its worst crisis till date. Diamond units have cut back on working hours, hitting the earnings of workers by as much as 30 percent. Staff have been sent on unpaid leaves, sometimes as long as a month. The U.S.-Russia war is one of the major reasons because of the sanctions of the rough. From the Russian uh, states and अपने India तो rough produce करता नहीं except Panna mines so हमको Africa या Russia से dependent है so that is one second is uh, global crisis similar to what we have seen I am saying it is like a 2008 so slightly down and third most important reason was the advent of lab grown diamond. Surat's diamond industry sources around 35% of its diamond supplies from Russia. That avenue is now choked due to western sanctions on Russia. Though lab grown diamonds with a price advantage of 15 to 20% have substituted the real stones to a large extent, softening the supply chain concerns, exports of gems and jewelry are still down. Exports in 2022 to 23 fell to 1.76 trillion rupees from 1.82 trillion a year ago. But it is the April to July export figures for this year which have set off alarm bells. Exports have plunged 29% in the first four months of this fiscal. Lab grown diamond है, वो semi property है, semi material है, वो lab में बनाया जाता है, उसमें अभी ठीक चलता है उसके हिसाब से जो भी वर्कर है उसको काम मिल जाता है नहीं तो वो लेब ग्राउंड डायमंड नहीं आता तो लगभग हालत बहुत खराब होती जो वर्कर है डायमंड इंडस्ट्री में वो उनकी हालत बहुत खराब हो जाती उनके लिए एक ये लेब ग्राउंड सारा मिल गया है रोजी रोटी के लिए मीन वाइल द ह्यूमन टोल ऑफ सूरत क्राइसिस इज माउंटिंग There have been several suicides over the past few weeks and thousands of layoffs as diamond units adjust to the new geopolitical realities. Associations however deny that the suicides are due to layoffs. जब वर्कर सुसाइड करता है तो उसका नाम रत्नकलाकार से ही सोशल मीडिया प्रिंट मीडिया इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स मीडिया के अंदर रत्नकलाकार ने सुसाइड कर लिया लेकिन वो हेडिंग ही सब लोग देखते हैं लेकिन उसके पीछे का रीज़न जानने की बहुत ज़रूरत होती है मेरा मानना है इफेक्ट है पर लेकिन जो बात हो रही इतनी इफेक्ट डायमंड इंडस्ट्री पर अभी नहीं है Surat is also hoping that its brand new 6.7 million square feet diamond bows will be the good luck charm the industry badly needs. Built at a cost of 32 billion rupees, the bows can accommodate 67,000 people in 4,200 offices. It is also the largest office space in the world. The Surat industry is hoping that the new office will wean some business away from Mumbai BKC's Bharat Diamond Bows, which is currently the world's largest diamond complex. With Sanjay Singh Rathore in Surat, Bureau Report, Business Today Television. 
That's where we leave it on the show tonight. Thanks for watching. should be your alternatives to white refined sugar which clearly is something that you must avoid let's talk about what you can use instead of this white sugar number one organic brown sugar organic then all the very better because this is extremely healthy now what it does essentially is that this is processed but it is made in the most natural way to retain most of sugar cane's nutrition and that's the reason why this should be an alternative coconut or palm sugar again extremely healthy sources of uh, sugar which are alternatives as well extracted from the flower buds of the coconut palm tree the sugar has a mild caramel taste and can be used in a number of ways in your delicacies also for daily consumption date sugar extremely nutritious natural sweetener date sugar can be a great addition to your diet this also is a good alternative jaggery or gourd as we know it has got a world of benefits in terms of uh, what it does to your body essentially a lot of people have spoken about the fact that during pollution you should be consuming a lot of good it's a great alternative to sugar also the fact that it is rich in iron is really an added benefit and added advantage raw or unprocessed honey this too is a great alternative you can use it in various forms like you use white refined sugar it tastes extremely good as well Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjtag.com. Just 24 hours before India scripts history. India's Vikram headed for victory. Vikram snaps stunning moon images. India prays for Chandrayaan 3. Chandrayaan's smooth sailing continues. Signs and spirit in celestial dance. In 24 hours from now and 4 minutes exactly you will see the soft landing of Vikram on the moon uh, tomorrow evening. And I'm going to be getting you all the updates as you can see. I'm standing here at what's called the Istrak complex. It is the mission control complex and behind me is where Team Chandrayaan is currently seated tracking every update that comes in on Lando Vikram as he heads closer and closer to the moon. I unfortunately can't pan our cameras because this is a high security complex. Uh, we've gotten the permission to stand here but this is pretty much all I can show you for today. More I promise coming up tomorrow. I'm very very excited to also tell you that in about 15 minutes from now we'll be joined by an astronaut by Chris Hadfield. The first First Canadian to have walked in space. He's built several space stations. He's had several firsts. He will in fact commanded the International Space Station as well. And he's going to be joining me at 6.15 p.m. to talk about India's space moment, to talk about our moon mission and much, much more.
5.20 tomorrow evening till 6.04 is when the soft landing process will commence. From 6,000 kilometers per hour, they have to bring it down to zero. And that very steadily will have to be done. The last four, five minutes, the last hundred meters is when all of the sensors, the thrusters will come in and ensure that very carefully Lando Vikram is brought down. And there, it'll be all about how our scientists have fed, how the design has been done. Because at that point, the scientists seated here behind me, Team Chandrayaan, we just have to keep the arms crossed and hope for the best. But let me round up for you all the updates that have come in, in the last 24 hours in our next report. India's moon mission is hours away from a historic climax. Chandrayaan's Vikram lander is approaching the moon rendezvous. Saying hello to Chandrama, snapping breathtaking images from close vicinity, showing moon in all its glory. With details of the unexplored far site, complete with billionaire-old craters. Indian Space Agency asserted that the mission is fully on track. The system is undergoing regular checks to ensure a smooth touchdown. It is almost similar to what we uh, designed or developed for Chandrayaan 2, except for instead of Orbiter now, because Orbiter is anyway working fine right. and it is still useful and it is giving a lot of in important data which will be utilized for Chandrayaan 3 landing also. Mm -hmm. So we decided that uh, we, we Orbiter will be replaced by a propulsion module. Uh, which, which duty is to take it to the orbit of moon surface. ISRO is not taking any chances, especially after crash of the Russian moon mission. Keeping another landing site ready for Sunday touchdown if parameters aren't ideal on Wednesday. Former ISRO chief K. Sivan broke down the final maneuvers moments before the planned touchdown. I want to start by asking you about the lunar mission uh, of uh, the Russians which crashed uh, uh, very unfortunately over the weekend without being able to land successfully. You know, given what has happened with the Luna 25, which was Russia's first attempt to land a spacecraft off the moon and that ending in failure, you know, would that increase the levels of anxiety of the team in the space center of ISRO at this moment? Does that make you one extra level more anxious? No, it is not so. First of all, uh, Luna uh, mission failure and uh, this one, they are not related. Luna, actually, that is have its own system, its own uh, the sensor, thrusters, and it may have its own characteristics. But uh, we have our own system, our own thruster, our own sensors, which is, it has been functioning very nicely and without any problem. And uh, till now, we are uh, uh, achieved what we want in a perfect way. And I'm sure that this will repeat on 23rd also. So we'll get a good uh, uh, landing and uh, we are not getting uh, uh, disturbed by the Luna 25 failure. We are, they are not related. They are not a similar system. They are different system. Okay. So we are confident that we are uh, will be able to achieve without any problem. A billion cheers, prayers, and wishes are meanwhile pouring in as India roots for Chandrayaan 3. एक बहुत बड़ा इतिहास भारत के सभी विशेषज्ञों ने हमारे वैज्ञानिकों ने रचा है और प्रधानमंत्री जी के नेतृत्व में भारत नई ऊंचाइयां तो छू ही रहा था भारत का तिरंगा केवल देश के अंदर नहीं लेकिन विश्व पटल पर पर अब हमारी यही कोशिश है कि वो तिरंगा चांद पे भी गाड़ के रखा जाए Special pujas are being held in temples and namaz is being offered in mosques, all for Chandrayaan's success. The lander is expected to touch down on Moon's South Polar region at 6.04 p.m. on Wednesday. We wish India a grand success in conquering the Moon.
With Akshita Nanda Gopal in Bengaluru and Milan Sharma in Ahmedabad, Bureau Report, India Today. And it's my absolute pleasure to be joined here on India Today by Chris Hadfield, former commander of the International Space Station and author of the Apollo murders. Just to give you a brief sense of all that Chris has achieved, he's flown in three missions, built two space stations, performed two spacewalks, and was the first Canadian to have walked in space. So you'd understand why I'm particularly excited about his new book, The Defector, that is, in fact, releasing on October 10th that's coming out. Chris, good morning. Congratulations. Congratulations on your new book and thank you very much for joining us here on India Today. I've been seeing uh, you know, from your social media interactions that you've been tracking the Chandrayaan-3 moon mission very, very closely. Just so for our viewers to understand from an expert perspective, from your perspective, how hard really is a soft landing on the moon? Well, thank you and good evening. Uh, yeah, I heard someone say a billion cheers for Vikram and uh, add my voice as one of those billion cheers. It's, it's immensely exciting. But as you say, it's extremely hard. Uh, you know, it's, it's 400,000 kilometers away and we're landing way down to the south, 70 degrees south. It's as if you were landing on the edge of Antarctica and you're trying to do it where, where the final last few meters or few feet of touchdown, you're, you're just counting on the automatic systems. And so there can always be, you know, a boulder in the way or, or a, an uneven spot on the ground, even though they've chosen a plateau. And I know that the Russians had no success earlier this week. Remember, they've launched 27 missions to the moon and they only landed seven times and the last one was a failure so it's still exquisitely difficult but with the tremendous uh, experience gained in chandrayaan one which helped discover water on the moon in chandrayaan two which has been mapping the moon ever since and now with uh, with sort of the the granddaughter of all of those of chandrayaan three I'm really optimistic and excited about the landing that's going to be happening just slightly under 24 hours from now. You know, I loved how you referred to Chandrayaan-3 as the granddaughter of these missions. It's so aptly put. I'm going to borrow that phrase also in the next 24 hours. You referred to Luna 25, and the reason I talk about it right now, Chris, is look, Russia has attempted this, as you said, 27 times. They've got it right seven times. Now, in the last 50 years or so, we've seen several such soft landings occur. It's 2023, and yet we haven't really been able to master it. Why is that? What makes it so unpredictable or so hard so many years on? Uh, well, part of it is uh, the nature of the moon itself. Um, if you were going around the moon, the amount of gravity that you feel in different parts of the orbit changes. The moon is a lot more lumpy than the Earth is. It's got big, dense sections. And so that makes orbital prediction more difficult. It's hard to know exactly where you are. There's no... GPS. So where exactly around the moon are you? How do you even figure that out? And even though we've taken lots of images from the orbiting vehicles of the plateau that Chandrayaan-3 and Victorum are going to land on, you still don't know the fine details. You know, imagine if, if you were trying to land a helicopter somewhere in India and you looked and looked and looked, but then just when you got close to the surface, you had to sort of close your eyes and then just descend the last 50 meters with your eyes closed. It's sort of that level of, of difficulty. And, and that's why the engineers at ISRO have been working so hard since Chandrayaan 2 to improve all of the systems, to make the landing gear wider and more robust, to try and give extra layers of, uh, of backup. And it is possible to land on the moon. Three other nations have done it. And I think India is really poised right now to be the fourth nation in history to land on the moon. The scientific impact of that and the inspirational impact of that for young Indians right across the country. But, but it all comes down to, uh, 
to that last descent and touchdown coming up uh, within a day now. Very true. And, uh, you know, the point that you also made about how hopefully this will come through, we've all got our fingers crossed. But also, besides what this will mean for ISRO and the kind of, uh, uh, you know, experiments uh, and the moon mission that they want to complete, Chris, what does this mean really in the global space race that's underway? Where do you think it will put India in that race? <laughs> Um, I work with several Indian companies. I, I help run an international technological incubator uh, called the Creative Destruction Lab. And right now I'm working with several Indian space companies. Uh, one of them is called Dhruva Space. And uh, I think this type of mission of showing kind of the ultimate capability of what Indian science and technology and, and combined capability can do, it's extremely inspiring, not just to young Indians across the country, but to young business owners and, and young uh, inventors, people who are looking to do something that used to be impossible. You, you need to have an inspirational vision of what might be possible to then drive yourself to, to make the most of your own capability. And, and when I work with the Indian companies and see the, the, the uh, educational capability, the, the insight, the brilliance of the minds and the, the opportunity that's opening up now, it, it's really showing uh, just how ISRO and space exploration in India is coming of age. And if you can land on the moon, I mean, you can do anything. And to me, that is the real essence of what is being attempted tomorrow. You spoke about how this is so inspirational for every Indian youth watching right now what ISRO is accomplishing. There are a lot of cynics out there who question, Chris, what's the need for a developing nation to invest so heavily in space, to invest so heavily in space exploration? What's your answer or response to that? Well, I, I think it's a really important question to ask because everything has to be done in balance. But I, I challenge anybody who asks that question, how much money does India spend on health and welfare and infrastructure to take care of the, of the you know, billion Indian people? You know, how much money is spent on that versus how much is spent on research and development and exploration? And I know for Canada, we spend an enormous amount of money on, on taking care of the Canadian people, but we also spend a little bit of money on inspiring and exploring and, and pushing the edges of technology. And I think it's important to do both. You don't want to get way out of balance, but, but I think it's important to truly get the exact numbers of how much is spent on taking care of the people, but also how much is spent on pushing the very edges of what we know and understand. And when I was a little boy, it was because of the, the moon landings that I decided what I was gonna do with my life. It's why I, I got multiple university degrees. It's why I challenged myself to become an astronaut and to eventually command a spaceship. And I'm Canadian. You know, I, I'm not from a country that used to have a space program. And so, yes, you need to take care of the people, but you also need to give your young people something that is so inspirational that they make different decisions with their lives to make the absolute most of themselves. And that balance is important, but I think what we're doing right now is a really key part of India's future. Yeah, that's a very, very interesting perspective. Uh, Chris, with if, and I, I'm going to say when rather, not if, uh, Chandrayaan-3 is a success, when that soft landing is completed, does it essentially set the stage then for a manned mission? As someone, you know, who's gone repeatedly to uh, outer space, does a soft landing then mean that, you know, we're ready for that next step of a manned mission? You know, when, when the very first human being stepped onto the moon, when Neil Armstrong uh, stepped on the moon, he described it as one small step, obviously, but a giant leap for all of humanity itself. 
But you have to make those small steps. You have to incrementally improve the technology and all of the people that, that build those machines. You have to allow yourself to make mistakes on the way to eventual success. And with Chandrayaan-1 uh, and then Chandrayaan-2, we've, we've made those small steps collectively as a group of people um, and, and pushed the technology a little bit too far, leading now, hopefully, to, to success for Chandrayaan-3. But there's a lot of numbers left after three, you know, four and five and six, and it, it, it's only limited by the imagination and the collective will of the Indian people, where this will take them. There are Indians right now selected as astronauts who are training to fly into space. It, it, you can't encapsulate science and technology and inspiration more clearly than in trying to develop the, uh, the capability for Indian citizens to be able to look up and see a fellow country person flying across the night sky. And that's coming fairly soon. And with what we learned from Chandrayaan-3, it will lead to eventually, not just an Indian citizen flying in space, but traveling all the way to the moon and, and, and walking on the surface. There's a Canadian going to orbit the moon late next year. That, that seems impossible to me. And yet, because of the small steps, that's happening for my country. And because of these steps of missions like Chandrayaan-3, it's happening for India. You know, steps that you've taken has ensured this moment for your country largely. So I'm hoping that there'll be many Chris Hadfields for India also very soon. Chris, I will tell you this, that, you know, with all of this talk of Chandrayaan, of what is was accomplished, it's piqued a lot of interest among Indians about space. And you've been there so many times, a former commander of the International Space Station. This is a tough ask. But can you tell me one experience that truly stands out for you? When you think about your journey in space, when you think about your experience in space, what's the one moment that always comes to mind? Akshita, I, I was so lucky to spend about uh, half a year in space. I went over India thousands and thousands of times. But I think my best moment when I was outside on my first spacewalk, we were south of Australia, sort of uh, north of, in between Australia and Antarctica. And while I was outside on a spacewalk in the darkness, we went through the world's aurora, through the southern lights of the world. And I could see the, the reds and the greens, and they were, they were pouring past our ship and, and, and flowing around me, the, the incredible, beautiful majesty of our planet. And it's very scientific. It's, you know, it's the Earth's magnetic field and the energy from the sun, but, but it glows in this beautiful ribbon of color. And this little kid got to go outside and, and experience that personally. This little uh, dreamer from Canada, I, I got to surf on the world's aurora. And of all the things I've done in my life, of, of all the myriad experiences, to be able to personally experience that as part of our, our first steps away from the world, uh, I, it was profoundly moving and beautiful to see our world that way and to recognize where we are headed collectively. Uh, it's it's a memory that that is seared into my brain and and one that I hope more and more people get to experience as our technology gets better and better. You know, you've described that so so beautifully. I half wish that instead of a journalist, I chose to be an astronaut after this conversation. But thank you very much, Chris. And as the sun sets on today, tomorrow brings a new day and history beckons India. As tomorrow evening, by this time, we'll have the great news. I'm going ahead and saying it with confidence that we'll have the great news of Vikram going ahead and making that soft landing on the moon. Let's get you all the developments that have come in so far.
India has all set to script history in its space mission. All of us are on the edge. Everyone extremely excited for the landing of Chandrayaan-3. ISRO has released the latest pictures of the moon clicked by lander image camera 4. This is on August 20th. As per ISRO, the mission is on schedule. Systems are undergoing regular checks. India today, meanwhile, has accessed ISRO's Plan B. In case of any delay, another attempt of landing will be carried out on August 7th. The second landing spot is 400 kilometers from the chosen site. Our next image comes in of Allahabad University students making a sand art of Chandrayaan 3's successful landing on the moon with the caption, Hum Honge Kamyaab. Maria Pan, an artist from Coimbatore, created a 1.5-inch miniature lander module using 4 grams of gold to celebrate Chandrayaan-3. Preparations are underway at several schools to celebrate Chandrayaan-3's successful landing on the moon. Plastic models, uh, school halls being decorated, special songs being sung, school kids also ensuring that they're a part of the Chandrayaan fever. And prayers are pouring in from all quarters for the successful landing of Vikram. Devotees offered special namaz at the Islamic Center of India in Lucknow to seek blessings for Vikram Lander. Pujas and havans are also being performed across temples in India. In Varanasi's Kamakya temple, a havan was performed by devotees. I'm sure by now all of you know that yes, Chandrayaan-3 is going to be making a soft landing on the south pole of the moon. But have you ever wondered why? Why did ISRO choose this particular part of the moon? It is going to be more challenging, but there are several reasons why Chandrayaan-3 is aiming for that south pole. Let's decode that for you in our next report. Three, two, one. We have ignition. The moon is just 25 kilometers below India's Chandrayaan-3. As a new chapter begins in India's moon tryst, a billion people are praying for its successful landing. The Vikram lander is aiming to land on the lunar south pole, which is a difficult feat. So what makes the soft landing near the lunar south pole incredibly difficult? The south pole of the moon's rugged terrain lies in the shade of perpetual darkness and plummeting temperatures. This is where researchers had previously discovered the presence of frozen water. Chandrayaan 3's successful landing will expand knowledge of frozen water on the moon, potentially one of the moon's most valuable resources. Scientists are interested in pockets of ancient water ice because they could provide a record of lunar volcanoes, materials that comets and asteroids delivered to Earth, and the origins of oceans. If water ice exists in sufficient quantities, it could be a source of drinking water for moon exploration and could help cool equipments. It could also be broken down to produce hydrogen for fuel and oxygen to breathe, supporting missions to Mars or lunar mining. Attempted landings on the moon have failed before. Russia's Luna 25 craft had been scheduled to land on the South Pole this week, but spun out of control on approach and crashed on Sunday.
The South Pole, far from the equatorial region, targeted by previous missions, including the crude Apollo landings, is full of craters and deep trenches. Chandrayaan-3 is proposed to land in the plateau between two craters, Manzanus and Bogoslowski, and a third, Sympelius. Additionally, an alternate landing site has also been proposed. At the mountainous South Pole, the terrain is difficult and dangerous with major craters. Minimal sunlight and temperatures below minus 300 degree Fahrenheit. If all goes according to plan, Chandrayaan-3 is poised to achieve a historic milestone as the world's first lunar mission to execute a soft landing near the moon's south pole. Bureau Report, India Today. Thanks very much for tuning in and don't forget to join us tomorrow from 7 a.m. I'll be joining you live from right here from Istrak, which is where Team Chandrayaan is currently based, giving you all the updates, live tracking of Lander Vikram and much, much more. Thanks for the moment for joining us. Good night. Biggest conflict zones. We are at the hostile air base and this is to the biggest international moments. A reporter with India's flag on his sleeve and an unrelenting eye on terror. Defense and national security on the road, up the heights, in the trenches. He brings you stories that must unite us because when it's national interest. It's India first. Monday to Friday, 10 p.m. Only on India Today TV. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjthug.com.
Hello and welcome, you're watching In The Club, I'm Dipali Patel, I'm back with the best from the world of entertainment. We begin our show today with the ever stylish Kareena Kapoor Khan, who was in the national capital, being the new face of a home decor brand. The actress was at her candid best during a live talk show with Neha Dupia. India Today was the only channel to get the access of this fun conversation. So listen in as Kareena lets her guard down to confess the unknown side of hers as well as her family. Do you wake up and whip it up on your own or you have like a whole like set of people who make your bed, um, make your coffee? What, because we want to know, they said, we just know the things right? No, of course, I, uh, but I'm a Virgo, so I'm a perfectionist. Same here. Uh -huh. And I like to do everything on my own. Because I'm just like, I'm just anal about things. Okay, I like the way my pillow should be. I like the way my, you know, comforter should be. I like, I'm very, very anal and particular. Now that that's out of the way, you wake up to making your bed. You're, you're kind of, you know, you walk out with your black coffee. You go to work. We're going to talk about work later. But that yeah. we always get to know what's yeah, going on. Yeah. So then you come back home. So then let's talk about Sundays. Now tell oh. us, beginning to end, what's a Sunday in the you know, Kapoor, Khan, household like? Uh, well, Sundays, we try obviously not to work. We try both of us because both Seth and me are kind of working parents. So, um, we try to at least be at home on the weekends to be with the boys. Um, Sunday, yeah, we're always craving to be with the kids. And Temu now is of that age where he's like, but I want to be with my friends. Call my oh friends no. over, call my friends over. I'm like, oh no, we're, like, you know, he's growing up so fast. So we try to cook a meal together, do something, you know, together. Uh, we play games, we play, you know, like his favorite game now is Uno. So now he's in that phase. We try to engage him and, you know, kind of just, you know, cuddle up and be together. That's the most important and thing. And then go to Mizu. <laughs> and she goes to the same restaurant every Sunday for lunch. I just... Please, we need to send her a list of... But you guys go out more often. <laughs> I think a lot of people feel that Seth and me don't go out too much. That's because we're always at work or we're traveling or something. So then when we're at home, we love cooking at home. Seth loves cooking. He's an amazing uh, chef. So we always oh, look up... Oh, is that right? Pizza. Please, let's backtrack. Let's hear what he cooks. He does meats well. He does... Uh, Italian, like pastas, pizza, he makes everything. So we try to kind of, you know, sh look at recipes together, choose something that we'd like to make. So we're more of like home birds. We're both very house proud because we like to entertain in our home a lot. So we call people home a lot rather than um, go to restaurants. Do, do Seth and Karina ever look at the price tag while buying anything? Of course, because, I mean, we work very hard to you know, um, earn our money. And both Seth and me have been working since the age of 17. Seth's worked over 30 years, me 23 years. So I think, you know, the whole idea is that it's not about having it and spending it and showing it off. The idea is to love something and keep it for years, you know. Very important, That's yeah. That's important. What are the power dynamics at home, like between the two boys? Um, does, is it fair and equal space or because Tim is older than, you know? They just constantly, they love each other, but they're constantly fighting. And Jay is always like, you know, like trying to like keep up to Temur because Temur is always like, don't do this and don't do that. And Jay is just, Vichara is just trying to, you know, 